Ministry for Fools. Happy New Year, everybody. Hey, We're back. Hey, Happy New Year. Hey, We're hey. still alive. Yes. Do not adjust your televisions. You are watching us in the right seats. We are here. And we are in the right seats. Nobody changed anything. That's right. We just decided to switch it up, make it different. You know, put a couple more plans. Cheers to the new year, man. Yeah, cheers to the new year, my brother. For all the things that we roll up and all. I don't think that's how it all <laughs> We'll sing a toast for all like Zion. And, 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 and. about white people, bro. White people have more drinking songs than us. Yeah, definitely. I always see that guy in the in the in the bar, like you know, in the movies, and they're all like, "Dude, I had to spend." <laughs> oh, none of my relatives see this. I just spent Christmas with my girlfriend's family. I didn't have to. I spent Christmas with my girlfriend's family. Lovely people, white. We had to watch a white Christmas. Have you ever seen this movie? Yeah, I'm dreaming. Dude, they don't stop singing the whole time. So and I don't like musicals. And I don't. I fucking hate musicals. I Nobody like, should like, be that jubilant. People are gonna start getting mad at me, but I don't even like that movie Grease. Fuck no, bro. Like, I, like I start, fucking hate Grease. Like if I if I had to choose the only musical that I ever watch, it would have to be Saturday Night Fever, baby. Oh really? I, mine would be um, it's a musical by M Matt Parker and Trey Stone, Hannibal. It's about a, it's about the Donner Party. <laughs> it's like it's a it's a hilarious musical. The Donner movie. Party ate the, they ate each other, right? Sacramento. Yes. Uh, no, uh, uh, well, it's called Donner Pass now, but it's like in between Sacramento and Reno. It's like the, t the but they ate each pop. other supposedly. They ate each other because they didn't, they couldn't, they were like stuck up there. Ran Did out any of them survive, or they all ate each other? One of them uh, died. I think a few of them survived. I don't know the exact story. That's a good history for fools. Um, it, 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 like one offer right there, though. I would say. But they ate each other. They ate each other for sure. Like they ate the they ate kids. I mean, they waited till someone dies and then they ate each other. What? Oh. <laughs> what me? Oh, Hannibal? Cannibal. That's what it is. It's Cannibal. Dope ass fucking uh, musical B uh, by Matt Parker and Trey Stone. Oh, that one. Yes. Have you oh, seen that one? Hell no. It's it's hilarious. I, I didn't like the South Park when they sang in the South Park <laughs> though, in that movie, bro. Yeah, South Park gets a little bit musically. Musically or whatever. Yeah, even when uh, Family Guys, when they start singing, I, I fast forward it, bro. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I stopped watching Bob's Burgers because they sang too much. Yeah. At first, I liked it only when the mom was trying to sing and she was horrible. So it was funny. But then they all sang that changed the channel. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm good with it, too. Also, like, when they start singing in, in my regular TV shows, I know the show is going to be canceled. It's going to be a bad. It's going to turn bad. And when the office, when they started singing, it yes. was over. So. Really? Did they start singing on The Office? Yeah. I fucking hate singing. Andy in, Bernard, in bro. TV he started playing movies. that. He started playing. The, yeah. I'm good with that. And shit. then um, Craig Robinson started playing the thing. And then Creed, I don't know where, plug guitar and singing. No way. Kevin. And then Kevin playing drums. Wow. Yeah, I'm cool with that. I don't want to see that shit. Like, if you just, just, just pull the plug. Just pull the plug. If you're like, if you, if you, if you ever go to the point of where you're like, what should we do next? Let's do a musical uh, episode. Pull the it, fucking plug. Imagine, man, you're watching your favorite show, whatever your show, favorite show is. Mayans or Son of Anarchy or something hardcore oh. <laughs> like w The Walking Dead and all of a sudden, the. The walker, the walkers, the zombies yeah. are sing are are singing like gospel singers. They're all. Okay, we, I know this, this is the history of a fool's recap show, but right. Could I say something, man? Sure. I don't have cable no more because many years ago I realized cable was too expensive, and I don't watch half of the channels, and I always wanted to pick my own channels, right? Which is what I do now, and I save hundreds of dollars. But um, and by the way, cable gonna go up in prices. Yeah, fuck um, I I ordered um AMC because okay. I want to watch that show because we, we we might be talking about um the history of um spies or the history of the American Revolution. Yeah, AMC. So I've been watching stuff. Turn about Turn. George Washington. It's called Turn, George Washington Spies. Really, what's it about? The all of um all the spies that George Washington used. Oh really? Yeah, man. He used spies from um, 
like he was spies through slaves. Okay. Like when uh when they break when they went when the when the north when the when the fucking uh, British came in and they took over a town that was all colonists. Right. They were they they freed slaves. Okay. The, the British were they already had freed slaves in England. That's right. So in America they 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 told them um they freed slaves with with the act of something I don't know the year. Okay. The act of seventeen seventy six, bro. Okay. They um or seventy seven seventy eight whatever they free the, anyways the British free the slaves during the American Revolution right and they give them a choice you know you're gonna work with us as a side army with the British right and then you get your freedom your citizenship yeah okay so um some of the black slaves they join um but they were doing a shit work bro like carrying all the heavy stuff yeah, you know pretty totally. much slave work yeah again. they were in the war but they were doing a lot of the shit work the shit work right yeah and i don't know too much about that 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 period but I, I i remember watching the patriot and some of them joined the queen's army which which was the like the 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 the, the equivalent of the green berets or the cia right because they don't follow no rules oh they were like their special they were not conventional they're like they're fucking. Like like they don't follow the rules. Like if they're walking around and you see George Washington walking by, yeah. they'll shoot him in the back, no problem. Right. But the but the conventional British army, if George Washington were to pass by, and his back is towards them, they wouldn't shoot him. Right. And which in real life they didn't. Right. They had a chance to shoot him, but they right. went to his back. Right. Oh, really? So they had to obey the rules so of fighting. So they wouldn't shoot him in the back. They wouldn't shoot him in the back. No way. Because he's a high general too. So we could have had a completely different. Fucking uh, like Which chain is, of events happen. So uh, that's why America had an advantage over the war because we were we were like fuck, fuck these rules, we bro. Fought dirty guerrilla wars. Shit, we got the South with the long range scopes. Right, no scopes, and um, and we had militias too, right? Like we were hiding in bushes and shit. Militias, and they doing dude. that. Yeah, but we'll, we'll get into that later. But um, so um, that's what I I got AMC right. Okay, and. I, I used to watch The Walking Dead, but yeah. then I stopped. Right. Too much. I have complaints. I love that show. Okay. I loved that fucking Dude, show. I stopped watching that show, and then another one came out, Fear of the Walking Dead. Right. There's three more. There's three more. There's a, there's a Walking Dead that takes place inside of a submarine now. No. That actually sounds like an interesting... I always thought when The Walking Dead came out, I was all, this concept can go everywhere. Yeah, so they're in a submarine. Yeah, okay. Or or whatever, right? That sounds actually pretty cool. And um, it's that kid that was in that movie, Bully. And and he was he was in one of the Terminators, bro. When the 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 girl came out with the curly hair. Terminator Three. Oh, I know a guy you're talking about, but I don't know his name. Um, John something. Yeah. John Connor. So that's coming out on AMC. That's already on. It's already on. Yeah, and there's another Walking Dead. Okay, so there's Fear of the Wa- Walking Dead. Fear of the Walking Dead. A- Walking Dead submarine. Yeah. And then there's a Walking Dead in Mexico, right, Philip? No way. Yeah, and there's another Walking Dead, right? What's the other Walking Dead? Jesus Christ, dude. That's a ton. Can you rattle them off again? Fear, Fear of the, the Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. The Walking Dead world beyond us in space, huh? <laughs> yeah. Fear of the Walking Dead. Okay. <coughs> the Walking Dead Dead City. And the De- Walking Dead Red Machete. Okay. What's yeah, that? Yeah, the world the one the one that he said the beyond one. Yeah. It's more like a civilized Walking Dead. Like they have worlds now. <laughs> okay. And they're they're pretty more controlling, right. but they're also batting each other. Have you ever, did you ever see um, the one with Will Smith and it's vampires? What the fuck is it called? I Am Legend. I am a Will Smith fan and I have not watched that movie. Okay. That movie takes place in New York and it's vampire, um, it's vampire zombies and, um, and it's a little different. But in the book, the zombies get smarter and the zombies... In the book, the zombies are their own society, and he becomes the zombie. He becomes the vampire. So I always thought that was interesting. If you if you put like the brains are the thinking back into zombies, and what would happen? You know the the history of Dracula is. 
Yes, a little bit. The, the Impaler, right? Impaler? Uh, the, uh, the Impaler, Vlad the Impaler. Vlad the Impaler. Right. He did was you, some guy who... Did you see how what he would do? Yeah, fuck yeah. But like, dude. they kind of copied his story a little bit on uh, on uh, Game of Thrones. Oh, did they? Yeah, one of the guys did the same thing. Actually, the, 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 the mother of dragons did it. She did it in one of the towns. Okay. She did it like to... I don't know what. Yeah, she did it. I never watched. Uh, I, I never watched. I hit my elbow on Game the of Thrones. Desk. I never watched Game of Thrones. Yeah, a lot of the stuff that that's that they ha- that happens during their battles are taken from actual battles from In, gladiators okay. and all that. So, um, so I, I, I've seen a bunch of them, but the one I know is that um, that dude he used to impale people through their colon, right? Okay. Through a pole. Vlad the Impaler. Yeah. Yes. And then the, the the weight of their body would make them slide down and be more in pain. It, all, they would like it would pretty much all yeah, day. He'd let them slowly sink down on their imp- on their impalement, and then like on their pikes. So he'll poke them, and then they'll hang them. Huh? Right. Yeah. And then yeah. Yeah. And he he would, would, he I would heard do, it with miles of this of people. Yeah, it was kids. It was people because this this I I can't remember exactly, um, but he was like pissed because they killed his family. Yeah. So he was like, he, you know, so he was like, he was actually like a pretty mild tempered dude. And then this fucking, this, some power or military group or whatever fucked with his family and killed everybody. And he was like, fuck that. And he just created blood everywhere. And he would drink their blood. That's where the drinking of the blood comes from because he thought it was like fucking metal to drink their blood. You think the cross came around because he was probably anti Christ or he didn't believe in that religion? Or well, the or be Catholic already. Well, I think at the time, if you're going and sticking people on pikes all the time, you're not a very godly person. So, like, the, any visions of Christ or God are like threatening to you. But I don't know where the where the exact like how they're afraid of or they get burned by crucifixes. See, that's from. the only, that's the only part they showed you, bro. The impaling, right? They didn't show you the part when he go visit his old grandmother and fed her, bro. Did he do that? No, but they do that. <laughs> but you know what I mean? You could have convinced me I that. stopped hearting him. You could have been like, hey, man, like he actually. But you know that in Hollywood they do that? Right, yeah. Like, like they'll show a, a American psycho yeah. killing people or whatever, right? But on the side, he's. He's taking care of his mom. Yes. Like in Joker. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I wonder, but but, I, they always, but they only show you like one part, you know, like you don't know why he did all this. Right. But it's still a, a bad thing to do. Don't go do it. Don't go impaling people. Don't go impaling people if someone kills your family. Call the police. Okay, so you know the cowboy lost, but don't impale people. Don't impale people. <laughs> yeah, Raymond Ortha, don't go around impaling people. <laughs> All right, I'm listening to the podcast. We're gonna be no history of hating, eh? Right. <laughs> That's a different. That's a different podcast. We need to start. So yeah, that was uh that was the worm the wormhole I fell in. When I ordered um, AMC for a week, right. that there was so many Walking Dead that I'm not gonna watch. Did you see any of them? Try to watch them? Like no, the no. summer one, submarine one sounds interesting to me. But the thing is, is that I, I like to me they could they should have done that at the beginning because everybody's tired of the Walking Dead, and it's like, dude, when you killed off the Asian dude, oh D- yeah, Dale, or not Dale, what was his name? Kyle. No. Jail. I want to say Kevin. Um, yeah, Kevin. Was it Kevin? No, Gwen. Glenn. Glenn. I have a shirt, dude, in the at the back of the house where it says "Ask me about Glenn," and then and then if I go like that, it it has his beat up face from the episode. I need a shirt like that. But when they killed Glenn, everybody fell off. I feel like everybody who was because I watched from day one. I mean, I used to read the comic books, and and I was like, this is. The, this is one of the most fascinating TV shows ever because when you would watch it, you'd go, uh, I remember being like, I fucking hate zombies. Uh, fucking, zo- I don't, cause I'm not into zombies, but I would watch, I started to watch because everybody was watching it. And then by episode three, I realized, Oh, it's not about the zombies. It's about surviving other human beings in a, a situation like that. My my only complaint about that show, and I have a lot of complaints about that show. Oh, I have a lot. They're being chased by rotting bodies, right? Right. They should have been wearing, like I'm. I can't believe these guys are not running around with handkerchiefs over their faces. 
Because that place smells like buttholes. I, yeah, that's what I always think. My thing is, or especially when they're walking through the middle of them, right? Or when they cover up their body with the st- with their blood to get through. How them. are you not throwing up? How are you not throwing right. up? Right. My thing is this. This actually made me realize I'll never want to be in any apocalypse, because the most ideal. I think the reason why zombies is is a cool thing, is because it's a survivable apocalypse. It's slow walking dudes who eat you, and they don't have. They're not human, so they're fun to kill. But the thing is, is that I didn't realize there's no toothpaste, no soap. These motherfuckers are having sex. They're sucking each other's dicks and eating each other out. Like, on the show, like, you don't see them sucking. But you see, like, Glenn put his head back, and that girl goes, up, she's like, I'm going to take care of you. They were just fucking stabbing zombies. And I'm like, fuck, that's so gross, dude. Like, no toothpaste? You're ne- I'm never kissing anybody ever also, again. Also, me too, man. Like, this is the thing, a problem I have, too, is that when they die... If they don't chop their heads off, they turn into walkers or zombies, you right? You got to put a hole in their head. Yes. Because you could chop their head off and so, they're, they're like a snake. So in actually, in reality, in, in their world, if we're going to keep their, living their world in reality, their world. Right. There's no way that baby would have been born alive. No. No. That's the thing, Because if too. your body is turning into a walker as soon as you die, right. your body rotting already. Right. There's no way your body could reproduce a baby nope. in that world. No. no. And that baby would have come out stillborn or would have come out like a little, ah. Well, that was the other thing is in my mind, I'm all, where's the Or that little baby would have been eating her out. <laughs> like that little baby would have. inside out. That little baby yeah. would have turned into a little walker baby in there. <laughs> right. And because no he abortion. Out of the stomach, and no like abortion, Quito. he would have ate it out. out. He goes, hello, my baby. <laughs> no. Ver- I just, I, I ver- never, yeah. The ver- ver- Fucking, uh, what's that movie with Arnold? Uh, Total Recall? Total Recall. With Quato, when he pulls up his shirt and there's that little baby under his, his shirt and he's all, Bleh. and he's the leader of the resistance or something. Um, yeah, dude. I, I was, in my mind the whole time, I'm like, where the fuck's the prenatal care? I had to go to a fucking doctor every week when Bobby was inside um, his mom's stomach. So it's like, you're out here walking around killing zombies, hot ass fucking. That's the other thing is it's Atlanta, bro. Like, oh so, the, so I'm saying it's humid. That smell would have been coming, whoa. humming from everywhere. And you're collecting fucking dirt and schmegma. Again, it's not. I'm good, bro. I'm and good. it's Atlanta, Mac. I can't believe nobody over there <laughs> trying to stab anybody, a, a walker, with one of those CDs. Hey. Those CDs people trying to pet you with. Right. The other thing is it's Atlanta. Check out my music. How many black zombies did you see i did i always was like it's atlanta where's these basketball sized ass fucking zombies like yeah where's their seven foot twelve because if you ever been to atlanta bro there's some big ass like if it it was a reality man (laughs) you would have been chased by the harlem globetrotters bro (laughs) you would have been walking and shit you would have saw these walkers with blue red blue and white (laughs) thing oh my god it's the, it's the Walker Trotters. Do you remember that episode where they ran into the Cholos in downtown Atlanta? They were taking care of all the old people. Do you remember that episode at all? Oh, is it Walking Dead? Yeah. It's like the second episode of Walking Dead or the third. They go to get Rick's guns, and they start battling it out with these Cholos in a lowrider. Oh, yeah. And no, it, bro. Yeah, and it was crazy to me because, like, I, I honestly, I don't, I like, to me, I was like, dude, Atlanta's, I mean, I'm sure there's Cholos in Atlanta. It's just not synonymous with cholos. Was like my first thought, bro. The only one I I remember with Mexicans in The Walking Dead was when um, that crazy redneck was on the show still, bro. The one that yes, uh, Daryl's brother. Uh, yeah, Daryl's brother. Yeah, and they showed those. They were, he wanted to kill or rob those Mexicans, and they all held him back. Come on, man, they might have a little enchilada. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's right. That was like the end of when you could be overly racist on TV. And then I'm watching it. I'm watching it. Like I didn't laugh. I, I didn't. I, I didn't laugh. But I'm thinking, like, yeah, he's a real redneck. Eh? Yeah, he, bro. he actually thinks we're, we're driving around with enchiladas. Do you remember the episode? It wouldn't even hold up, bro. <laughs> Let me tell you, man. If you're a redneck listening, enchiladas don't travel well. They it, don't travel well. By the time you take it from us, it'll be a quesadilla. Yeah, gross. It'll be a quesadilla. Do you remember, uh, it's like, remember, I think it's like the second season, the mayor episodes with the mayor and they're that village and they get caught 
and they get thrown in a jail. You're talking about the governor? Yes, the governor. My favorite series, by the way. That I don't know who that actor is, uh, but he played a mean Elvis Presley in a movie. Really? Yeah. So he, so in that episode, they find. Remember, they find the racist brother again. He's got like a, he's got like a spike instead of his hand, and he throws it. He throws Glenn, the Asian guy, in with two, uh, with with two zombies, and he tells the zombies, he's all, eat whatever you want, but you're gonna be hungry in an hour. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, this fucking show, dude. <coughs> yeah, yeah, that show was good for a long time, and then it got frustrating. You know, it'd be funny, bro, you should have threw in this line when, um, when, they, when like, you know, like, like but, but right, since the writers are white, uh-huh. they don't know how to write jokes uh, 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 towards each other. Okay. Like, they know, they know how to write jokes about blacks. Right. They know how to write an Asian joke. But they don't know how to write good jokes about white people. No. Like if I was a writer, right. I would have like, like if one of those rednecks would have been dying, yeah. and there would have been like a zombie. Yeah. He, I would have. They would have written something like, "Oh, come on, man, he already fucked the sister. Might as well let him eat him." <laughs> he goes like, "Cause his sister would have showed up with a yeah, walker." Yeah, yeah. And he goes, "Oh, that's my sister. Come on, goes, man, you you already had sex with her. You might as well kill her now." <laughs> But well, see, they'll get offended so hard. Right, totally. But it's hilarious, it's dog. It's hilarious, dude. It's hilarious as how we have another. Well, the other one to me, the thing that threw me off was like when they get on the farm and it's like the Baptist minister and his like three daughters. And they, Herschel. Right. And then one of them hooks up with Glenn. And I'm like, what in what fucking world does a Baptist dad be okay with his white daughter dating someone outside of the race? Like, I, like that's where I was like, all right, this is like the first sign of bullshit to me. Probably didn't want people to be asking, man, so this was going to be racist <laughs> during the apocalypse. In, in apocalypse. <laughs> that's what I saw dude. about that Dale's brother, that dude. Chill, bro. Chill, dog. Half the population's dead. I go, yeah, you need to die. Right. <laughs> and how about that, dude, that man, John Berenthal, right? He plays Shane. He plays Shane, yeah. Gets pussy whoop and loses his mind. Eh? Yeah. He went crazy, huh? He went crazy. Why? Because he wanted but, Lori. Well, he was beating the head or what? It was just, or. He wanted he Lori. He was turning, huh, already, he huh? He was turning, and that's the thing is that they say everybody turns is turning into a zombie, like when they're alive. I don't know how true that is. But, like, I, I mean, well, I don't know how true to the, like, that's such a, such a stupid thing to say. Uh, but, I mean, like, um, I think that he got very jealous and he fell in love with Lori, and he had Carl as a son, and he had the life that he always wanted. And then Rick shows up, and he knows Rick's like, dude, Rick's fucking super alpha, bro. So it's like he's gonna lose his mind. You have to sit there, bro. You get it's the apocalypse. You even if you're John Barenthal, getting pussy is fucking rare. And then fucking her ex husband, her dead husband, comes back and takes it from you. I'd be pissed too, bro. I'd be losing my fucking mind. That was fucked up. How the way he killed Otis, though. Remember when they were they, he, he, that fat dude? He went with him. Oh too. yes. And he and then he goes um, he goes, he well he had to, bro. That's he survival. He was on his wife, right? Yeah, but when when they're like when they went to go do a little, they went on a little, they went on a little run. Otis, he was fat as fuck, right? Right. And he couldn't make the run. And then the the zombie the walker caught up they and he and he goes him. he goes let him have it so he could get away right and then we went back over what happened to Otis he didn't make Otis it. was the guy that was uh, always being his wife okay I was like cool you could leave him I, I I was there too though I was like let that fool let that because you're in the again you're in the apocalypse like if we're in a real world bro and you're a wife beater and some zombies are eating you but it's like two zombies in the whole world and yeah. there's cops down the street. I'm going to try to save you. You know what I mean? I don't want you to die, dude. We'll fuck, cause it's, you know. But you're in the fucking apocalypse, dude. You beat your wife, you're a piece of shit. You're going to be the first one to go. Like, I, I'm surprised he lasted that long. John Berta, probably, he was an, he's an American actor. Is he? Yeah. That's always been my wonder. because Rick he, is British. Rick is British. Dude. Totally British. And so is that guy that, um, the, Boba, the Boba Fett of the show. What are you doing, clearing? Um... The black dude oh. with a stick. Oh, uh, what was his name in the movie? I can't remember. 
But you know who else is uh, are he's either Australian or British is Daryl. Yeah, Daryl. Yeah, he was in the movie Boondog Saints. Right. But he plays like the best redneck in fucking. Uh, well, he looks like a redneck. Bro. He does look like a redneck. He looks like, like you a can't see that redneck. guy in a business suit. No, fuck no. Norman Reedus, that's his name. Norm Reedus. Norman Reedus. He's not? I thought he was from another. Oh, man. No, he's British. I thought he was. He's so good looking, though. He's not even overweight. <laughs> That's what's tobacco between his teeth. Well, you got to know how to chew tobacco, I guess. Yeah, I think he, he, he puts it lower his mouth and goes. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so. I thought he was British. Oh, okay. All right. Nah, bro. I was talking about, look, somebody look, look it up, Philip, because I don't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of God and. Lenny. Lenny. Which one's Lenny. Yeah, Norman Reedus. Who's Lenny? Yes, yeah. Oh, the name Lenny? He's an American actor. My bad, bro. That is From my Kentucky. bad. See, this is what happens when you don't do your research on history for fools. You get called out. Boondog Saints. Morgan. His name was Morgan. He's yeah. Lenny and Snatch. That's right. He was Lenny and Snatch. He's oh, British. That's right. Yeah, that's right. He is. He's British. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, there you go. You learned something new on History for Fools because we're fools. Yeah, man. I, I've been to Atlanta, man. And and if you've ever been to Atlanta, the punchline, yeah. you've seen the shows. A lot of Mexicans show up to my shows. Hell yeah. It's funny, but they're not... They're not represented in oh, The Walking Dead. But they are represented in Fear of the Walking Dead. Uh, they, but that place takes place in Los Angeles, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that makes sense. And the color, like the the color, the lighting of um, Fear of the Walking Dead is like it's sespia, right? It's all orange all sepia. the time? Sepia. Yeah. The fuck is sepia? See, see it's, like a, it's got like a sepia filter or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird, man. It's a weird thing. Can I ask you something? Um, what is... So we, when we get together and do this um, podcast, we decide what we're going to work on, and then we kind of uh, go back and forth. And this started because me and you would always talk about history of stuff together that we like were interested uh, by ourselves. Yeah. What when you're not like doing stuff for when you have time to look up stuff? Because you were saying you were looking up the watch, you were watching the George Washington. Like, what is your what captures your interest, like history wise? I don't know. Like, what do you look up? Like, what? Like, where? Like, where? where? Well, like, like, um, hmm. oh, when I I saw a photograph one time of um, George Washington. Yeah. And he was always next to this black dude. Okay. All the time. All the time. And that dude, was, and then he was always, and then that black dude was wearing, he, he was a wig wearer too. And then I started looking at him more and I started digging him up. Right. And um, that guy, he was supposed to get his freedom when uh, when George Washington died. Oh, okay. Because he it was a slave that he was owned. he like his like main slave. It was a slave. Okay. But he he was well read, educated, and um, he was pretty much an advisor of George Washington during the American Revolution too. Oh, really? He was what Samuel Jackson was to Leonardo DiCaprio in um, that movie. Um, uh, Django. Django. Okay. But not so much like. In charge of a, of a whole a lot of slaves, but he was smart, bro, intelligent man, well read, and I looked him up, decorated dog, and um. Do you do you know his name? Did you get his name? Billy, Billy Lee. Lee, yeah, he was Billy, Billy Lee. Lee, and he and he has he was a he was then I found out through him that there was like he was there was spies, bro. Okay. There was spies, so that's how looking up spies, and I ran into a guy, a real person. On the show, he's called um, Andy Woodhall. Andy Woodhall. But, but for years, bro, for years, this was all hidden. I didn't right, know. Right. So then I said, then I, when, I, when that show came out, I wanted to see it. And then when I went to uh, Boston, I did the the bo- I, man. I, uh, my the, the comedians I were with, they were loaded the night before, so they didn't get up till two, bro, two p.m. Whoa. So 
I had, I got up at around eight, around seven, dude. Right, I we're was up out pretty there, early. Bro, with, yeah. the, with the Boston Tea Party, bro, ready. Were you? Did and, you go? Uh, did you go around and look at stuff? Better than that, bro. Right. I got in one of those those touristy buses. Nice. While we're here, we have the Boston Tea Party, ah, and if you know the. Ah, but this, man. I did the bo- I did the tour of Boston right. on that little trolley. Yeah. And I didn't get off. Right. You know, you could get off and jump back out. I didn't get off. And I went <laughs> and taught me everything, bro. Like Robert, um, you know, um, the Red Coats are coming. Oh, um, Paul Revere. Paul Revere. I found out that he he wasn't he didn't finish the run. The what part, happened? It was he got fucking drunk. Power beer. He stopped for a drink and he, got he, he got loaded when he was he wasn't supposed to be in charge of the when the red coats are coming, right? Right. But he got fucked up. And when he was about to run, his horse he hit a branch with his horse and he fucking fell. And Samuel Adams finished the, the run. No way. But since Power this That's is the, actually really interesting. This is what the history guy said on the right. bus. He said that said but but since Paul Revere's brother-in-law was the historian at the time right so he gave paul revere the 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 the, 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 the i feel so fucking lied to right and now. samuel adams got the beer i feel so lied to right now and dr samuel adams he got the beer he got the beer would you rather have been a legend that people talk about all the time because there's a whole song remember it's like the midnight ride of paul revere there's like a poem or a song or would you rather have a beer named after you i don't know bro how about the history <laughs> but Paul Revere was everything, bro. He was a right. he was a blacksmith, he was an architect, a woodsman. He was everybody that showed everybody in the American Revolution that showed up first was, was had skills. They you had know, skills. Like, they were skilled they were masons. They're Mexicans. They're masons. Oh, masons! I'm all there. Mexicans. Mexicans. <laughs> Mexicans. So- but then I fell on another fucking another rabbit hole, bro. When I when I was doing when I was researching coats. Right. Because um, the Masons, right? Yeah. Um, Benjamin Franklin was a Freemason, right? Right. And so was um, the the guy from France was a Freemason, right? Um, Gerard Depardieu. No. Uh, who? Fonfois. I made it up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> um, Marquois. Marquise. So back then, Masons were like skilled workers. Yeah, they were just like this brotherhood of dudes, Br- brotherhood old dude. dudes. They were just they go all the way back, bro, to the fucking um the Knights Templar. Knights right? Templar. Yes. Yeah. Because I think it was like um the so, yeah go ahead. So Benjamin Franklin, since he was a Freemason, um he he went over there to France and he just borrowed a bunch of money. Oh, anyways, well, I'm, I'm getting back to the I did the bus tour, right. and I found out that Benjamin Franklin was buried with, was buried in Boston. Okay. Not in the White House, not in D.C. like everybody else. He was buried in Boston because he was a fucking dirty pig, dog. I heard that he was a bit wow. of a. He invented electricity and also and also diseases, dog. Yes, I've heard that he is a little bit of a, of a little whore. Yeah, he's a little a little, uh, little slut. And yeah, man. So I, that's how I fell into that. Okay. So ever since I went to Boston, I learned that that little thing. I've been wanting to learn everything about the Re- American Revolution. That's dope. And I read, and I have the a book I re- on an Audible called "The Sores of War," and it's the whole history of the American Revolution, bro. Like from the beginning, bro. From when they shot, they killed the the, the uprising and right. the the Boys of Liberty. Yes. Yeah, all that stuff. That's really good. Um, when we were in um, Philadelphia, I started to get interested in that stuff because I'd never been really that interested. It's in- crazy when you were in Philadelphia and then you're in that town, Sawtucket or no, whatever. Well, that's in northern New York, but those places where Washington had his troops. What was the na- yes, yeah? When we were flying over him, you know, Rodrigo knew a lot about that stuff, and he was pointing out as we we're like. So I think we're flying in together. I feel like we're flying in together, or maybe we're driving into Washington, D.C., and Rodrigo was pointing out a bunch of stuff, and I was like, holy shit, dude. Like, I never really ever thought about um, our own history in America So, a- until we got out there. Because here in California, there's no there's history here. I shouldn't say that because we have missions. There's two of them. Um, what? There's two histories in California, the Spanish and the American, right? Right, yes. They intertwine. But, but like, 
there's not a lot of infrastructure where you look around in California and go, oh, that's been here for th- uh, two, three hundred years. Like the East Coast. You're was- talking about the Apple Store. They used to be something other than something else. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's it. Right. There's no real character. I mean, you got to go look at a mission or, you know, oh, the 101 is old, but it's uh, paved over or whatever. But when you go to like the East Coast, fucking history is everywhere. Like the build, like just buildings alone by themselves are amazing. Yeah, even like when we when we uh, we, we we drove by uh, the the places where Sylvester Stallone ran through the houses, they looked the same at they night. They look the same. Scary as fuck, still. Dude, still like still hood as fuck, bro. Oh, we were, when we were walking to the club, remember all those apartments? Yes. They're right on the street. They're right on the street. Like, like right there. Hood shit, straight, but like straight hood shit. But remember when we went to the um. To the to the cheesesteak places, yeah. And the homie that took us, oh, I love fig, that was like, place. Hey, the whole neighborhood around here is like not a good neighborhood. Though, bro, that was so. Good. I love that area. Give me the chills. Yeah. We went to, we went to the Pat's cheesesteak, right? And the other one, uh, Gino's. Gino's. Yeah. Also, man, that whole if you ever go to Philadelphia, that place, Pat's and Gino's, that whole little area, we didn't get to see all of it. But if you walk even further, there's a place. Where they got nothing but espresso and cappuccinos and cannolis, but it was closed no, when we got there. Oh, I love those. It was closed when we you know got there. You know what you guys missed was Reading Station or Reading Station. Oh, you went? That thing was fucking amazing, bro. Like, I was so mad that I, because I ate before I went there. It's like food heaven. It's funny, dude, you stay at Reading Station because remember when um, we were talking about um, all those places that these billionaires used to own and right. that was a rating station was which station? Uh, every all, all those little markers of businesses that were in are in monopoly are actual real places They're in philadelphia real places that were owned by fucking millionaires or billionaires and when we we're in pittsburgh bro geez. pittsburgh was also we were right ne- we were not right next to one of those cranes Dude, we need to go back and revisit or not re- go back and revisit we should go back there and revisit but um, we did a lot of research on that. I think that's kind of what tipped us off to the history for fools. Was that's that, right. We did we, our own history. We did our own shit. We uh, were doing our own thing out there. In like Carnegie. Way. Yeah. Because <laughs> when we performed in Pittsburgh Improv, I mean, you can look it up if you're like if you want to do like watch the show and look it up. Look look at the Pittsburgh Improv. Right. And look for the the steel mills of stacks. The 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 smokestacks. Smokestacks, yeah. Of Carnegie Carnegie Steel Company. Carnegie Steel, right? Right. And then between our hotels was that huge crane that they would dump the hot ore into the river right there. The Gary or the Gurney? Uh yeah, it was called the the, Je- the Jenny or the Gurney yeah. or something. Um dude, I'll put I'll give pictures to Philip to put on right now. But it's like this huge crane and it would drop the hot ore into the river and then the that river that we because both our balconies were facing that river yeah and that river was used to bring steel up and down carnegie yeah, river. Had bought all that area and took advantage of that area and was like uh that was like we were staying smack dab right in the middle of one of the most historic places in america yeah. i would say yeah you look up um um steel protests Carne- oh Car- carnegie God. steel protests and that's the area we were at. Yeah, where all those people got killed by the Pinkertons and stuff, and we did all that research together. Remember the war, the strike breakers. The strike breakers, yeah, they were the Pinkertons. Oh, imagine, dude, like you got five hundred people that that don't want to work and are protesting. Man, it, I mean, back then, how those guys could find six hundred people to go beat their ass, right? But nowadays, bro, people are just lazy. You can't find two hundred people to help you, two people to help you no, move. You can't pay me enough to fuck somebody up, and I'm capable of doing it. Imagine, bro, we're gonna give you one dollar and a hot soup and a billy club. Go out there. They would go do it, bro. Well, they beat people the fuck out people. People were hungry, huh? And like, remember, like when we read, it was like women and children had died in that in in that in that strike break, and then. They flooded the town. Oh my Remember god! They flooded. We, the- we we went to this town. Yeah. We had, we we looked at we looked up this town, and he goes, "I think I read about this town, and it was one of those towns where Carnegie's homie." Yeah, yeah, it was his homie, right? Philip, what's Carnegie? Carnegie's um side partner name. Anyways, man, this guy Vanderbilt. Not Vanderbilt. No. He had, I guess there's another rich, famous guy, right? This guy um. They wanted to build a, a, 
Huh? Henry Clay Brick, gangster. Yes, yes. Remember the, that dude? Henry Clay Brick was the, a financier and a businessman too of the time. What but was he, it? Brick. F. Frick. Yeah, Frick. Right. The guy Frick, he was one of those guys that would, he was like one of those hardcore businessmen, you know, like the yeah. old school, you know, like, like, like Donald Trump's father, like old school, you know, like. You know, like the Andrew Jackson style, like we're gonna we're gonna have a duo. You Do know. Do you remember why he flooded the? Was he yeah, the, he was. They, they were building. They build, They were building a a golf course, and they were building a lake to for fishing, bro. That's right. It was. A, it was a, they were building a country club in that area. Yeah. And they they wanted. Um, Rich people are so nasty. They man. wanted. They wanted a, the lake, and they kept telling him, "No, man, you can't do that. You're gonna." We can't overflow the lake, and right. they, and then, oh man, it started raining, and yeah. like let me tell you, man, they that flood that they caused back then was so bad that they found fools floating in Cincinnati. Yes, that's right. They found bodies floating. That's right. I forgot that. Holy shit, dude! That was I remember because it was like uh, what was it like 400, 800 people, 400, 500 people that died in that or something like that. And the people lost their businesses. Yes. Wow, bro. That I remember doing reading about and all that stuff. We were guess, so fascinated. Uh, guess how much they were fined and how many people went to jail. Um, if it's anything like it is now, nobody. 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 And Carnegie was out of town while this all happened. Of course he was, dude. Remember he was out of town, he came back all mad, he goes, hey, frig, and then they fired his ass or something. Yeah, and it was, that's it, that was it. They had a little Then spat. later on in the future, somebody shot his ass, finally. Finally, but Jesus Christ, dude. That was really good. Imagine, man, like, how do you come up with being, like, the main guy that, I'm gonna be the only one selling steel. Or, there's competitors, but right. he was, like, the biggest... Carnegie got together with another guy right later on. Um, trying to remember the name. It was Carnegie and American Steel. Yeah, it was um, Carnegie. Rockefeller. And, yeah, I think it was either Rockefeller. J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan. Morgan, bro. Right. Yeah. You know what was, what was cool about that was that we didn't know that that was where we were going to be. Not even know. No, we just rolled up. We were like, oh, cool. We have balconies that face the river. This is nice. And there's these huge stacks off in the distance. And you started to look everything up. It's funny. It happened so long ago that when you talk to the people there, they don't know shit about it. Eh? They have no idea. <laughs> they have no fucking... Nobody in that area knew any of that shit, dude. Like, we're going to give you driver, a stadium, all right. Dude, our Uber driver was like, I don't know why the fuck these things are here. Like, this is just some steel. <coughs> He's all, I think they built steel here or something. I was like... I remember sitting in the back of the car. I'm like, you can't... You mean make steel? Like, whatever, bro. But I was like, yeah, they have no fucking clue. They had no clue. And to me, I was like... Holy shit. I was so fascinated. Me and you were both fascinated. But I started sending pictures to my girlfriend and it because it was such a fascinating subject. She started looking stuff up and sending me information, you know, because it was like and we, all of us were like, holy shit. Like all this stuff went down. Not we down the street. The, we went to a smokehouse at night. Remember? Right. Yeah. Yeah. We went to the smokestacks. Huge, huh? Huge, man. They were huge. And they were burning all day, huh? All day. All day, all night. And that was the thing. Well, because to me, it was cool about it. It was like, it wasn't a park. It wasn't down the street. It wasn't like, it was kind of unknown that all that. And, and it was, like, again, I'm telling you right now, like, one of the big pillars of the United States are, of our power is our steel, was our, of, uh, was our infrastructure and in steel. Fierro, baby. And Puro so, fierro. All that shit was going down right there. It wasn't like, oh, this is like some part of history. That was a massive part of history. Smack dab in our hotel and the club we were going to were right there. It was fucking so cool, man. Man, we heard, we, we read and uh, the first time I went to Pittsburgh, um, I remember talking to like, because there was a woman there I met at, at the show. She was wearing a, a, a one of those Teamster steel jackets. Yeah. And I said, hey, oh, you worked there? Goes, no, it was my grandfather's. Right. <laughs> That's the thing, man. I wish that I had uh, a lot more time to explore Pittsburgh um, because it has a lot of history like that. And I'm sure there are people that have been there. Like, I mean, because even up until what, the late 80s, steel was a big, big deal in Pittsburgh, right? Also, um, 
Yeah. Um, now go ahead. No, that's all I was saying. Was it just would have been more? It would have been interesting to to talk to people. That and uh, that, that's what they had. We were, talk, we were talking about. They made that movie. What a feeling. Flash dance. Flash dance. Was that in Philly? Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh? Yeah. No Cause, shit. Because in the movie, she worked in a steel company. Oh, that's right. She worked at a Remember steel company. Remember, she's that, that montage of her <laughs> going to work with a construction, construction helmet all cute. Yeah. And then her fucking welding helmet. Right. And then her dancing. And then dancing. And then the, yeah, and I the remember waterfalls. That. I, when I, was a, I remember as a kid watching that and not understanding what uh, the significance Bro, was that. I read a book called um, High Pitch Concept. Okay. And I have it at home. I'll let you read it. Uh-huh. And you get to me back later because it's the only copy I have and it costs 75 bucks. No way. They stop printing it. What's it about? It's about Don Simpson. Simpson and Bruckheimer. Okay. Remember that? It was Brock, it was Simpson and Brockheimer films oh, productions. Yes. But okay. now it's just Brockheimer. But it was Simpson and right. Brockheimer. What and happened? Don Simpson OD'd and died, bro. But that the, the whole book was an un- 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 autographable book about him. And when he he was the one that cast it and came up with that movie Flashdance. Okay. And it would be her between her, that woman and and another woman, bro. Um the woman from, um, from, um, she played the cop, the bad cop in um, Ace Ventura. Oh man, I haven't seen that in movie in so long. Huh? Sean Young. Sean Young. Okay. So they have Sean Young. First, she auditioned. She was their first choice. Right. Then they had, they brought it. They, then they brought in the girl who got it. Right. Jessica Bill. I don't know her name. Anyway, so um, Don Simpson brought. The chick, and then she left, and he asked everybody in the in the in the, in the meeting, "Which one of those chicks would you rather fuck right now?" No, fucking dirty, bro. Hollywood's dirty, bro. Which one of those chicks would you fuck right now? Or would you would you fuck that chick? And he said, "The fool said nah," and the other one got it, dog. Oh, really? Not Sean Young. No shit. So in that book, that book, Don Simpson. That fool talks about um, how he would come up with these movies. Let me tell you, bro. Dom Simpson must have been must have been a, a sexual provide a pig, hookers, drug, like a real Weinstein. Everything, bro. Everything that he did was all bad. But that motherfucker, when he came up to movies, he's a genius, dog. Like that when he came up with that movie, um, he came up with that movie with Tom Cruise, bro. Magnum, what's it called? It just came out. Top Gun. Top Gun. He was just reading an article, bro, about a, about a flight school and a Wait newspaper. Wait a minute. He, re- he created. He's the, that's that's where the the, um, uh, the origins of that movie come from. Yeah, he was reading an article about um about fucking uh, flight school, and he came up with Top Gun, and he told somebody to write it, and he wrote Top Gun. No way. Okay. An officer, and a gentleman. Right. He's the one that decided to put that song. In the movie, and that song became a hit, and so did the movie. What is it with these guys who are pieces of shit that put out? He great was content? the guy that came up and put, decided that putting a black dude, a funny black dude, and a straight black guy together as cop will work. He's the one that put like. Um, oh, you mean like Forty Eight Hours? Yeah, he's that was him. Okay. Wow. Beverly Hills Cop. Wow. Uh, he did all the movies. He did Beverly Hills Cop, bro. He did um, Bad Boys, Bad Boys War. He did I fucking um, that a, a lot of great movies. All the big movies of the nineties and eighties, it was him. The Rock. The Rock. Wow. Uh, although he 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 was the first person to put a soundtrack that was a hit in a movie. Wow. And also, fucking a chick while the other chick is taking a shit. That's wait a minute. Let's go back to that one. <laughs> no, you went from and you this, went from putting a fucking hit in a in a soundtrack to fucking a chick while she's taking a shit. Talking to a chick while the other chick is taking a shit. Two chicks. Two chicks having sex with each other while one's taking a shit. What movie is this? No, this is in a book. <laughs> but. I want to see this movie. <laughs> but it's just, the movie's about Don Simpson, and um, it's unauthorized, you know, but um, it, it 
the things that Weinstein did, you know, he's a rapist, but this guy, I don't think he ever raped anybody. Right. He's but, he's, he, but his name comes up in another book. Okay. If these walls could talk. Uh, and um, so he came up with a movie concept, bro. Like, he's the one that came up with, like, he could he could write a movie like this, bro. That guy would like that. He he was the kind of guy that be on the phone, like this with a bag of coke right here and go like this. High concept. High concept. That's the name of the book. High concept. High concept he right. came up with the idea of a high concept. Oh, but, okay. And um, he would have a bag of coke like this. He go watch this, watch this. I'm a fire two screenwriters right now. Come here, you asshole. What to tell you about that fucking movie? Let's write it again, and then we write it again. So in, in my in my when I read that book, I wanted to be not Don Simpson like his sexual lifestyle, but I want to have that power where where I come up with an idea, right? And two people write two movies, and I pick the right one, and it gets produced. Okay, that's an executive, bro. So like he 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 made that structure. Within Hollywood, he's the one who invented that structure. No, bro, that's a structure that re- that that is in Hollywood already. Already, right? But but that was that was but he came up with, with with the idea that actually worked. Right. Okay. Yeah. So this dude, this dude would just come up with. A, he had like he's the head of a head of a, a studio, bro. He was the head of Paramount. What is he? Oh, he's dead. What happened to him, bro? In the book, they talk about he was obsessed, bro, with Tom Cruise. Okay. Like in that movie, that movie with Tom Cruise when he was a, a race car driver. Yeah, Days of Thunder. Days of Thunder. This motherfucker bought a, the same car in a movie, and bought the same outfit that Tom Cruise wore in Fuck the movie. Yeah, dude. And he got lip liposuction, bro. Okay. To get skinny, bro. <laughs> and then he got fucking a, a penis implant. Right. But it, but he did a lot of coke, and it fucked up his penis, bro. Oh no. It was all infected. No, this motherfucker, bro. Like Artie Lang. He hired a, a, a he hired a rehab. Uh, the, the last draw was when he hired a a guy to help him use drugs, like a a personal trainer for to help him use drugs. Yeah. And that guy OD at his house. Shit. This is it sounds like. What's the name of the book again? High concept. High concept. He talks about he he talks about all the fucking. He like in the in the book he calls Demi more, give me more, because she loves coke. Oh wow, this is sounds like a very salacious book. Um, definitely, that's one of the things too that it I don't hold back. But you learn the movie business in this movie, bro. Like right, the the true business movie, and this is like we're talking about movies right now and Dom Simpson because you know our next episode is going to be on Latin films, right? And we're going to really dig in on like why. The reason is that much. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even call it rep- representation. Under representation. But there's like no, there's not even enough Latin Latin film made in America to really say there's representation. There's a small, and you'll be surprised at some of the numbers that I found, and I'm sure that you found some of them. There's a very, very small number of Latin people versus all the other. But representation counts, man. Because when I was a kid, I didn't know it then to I know it now. I was watching um, Different Strokes. Yeah, and a Mexican guy showed up in right. the movie, and he was like, uh, uh, he wanted to beat up um Gary Coleman, of course, because he owed he owed him money. So he was the bully. He was a bookie. Oh, he's the bookie. I think uh, they were making bets and they were losing. Okay, and they was Sal Lopez, bro. Oh shit, a young Sal Lopez. That, that guy, he's like in Sanford and Son and all that. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, he was remember. an American me. He was yes. his, um, um LJ's almost dad. Right. Yes. Philip, look up um Sal Lopez. On different strokes, and you could see his photo, 1970 something. And I was like, fuck. And I thought that was cool, bro. I remember being a kid and thinking Ponch was the coolest motherfucker on the planet. Like I wanted to be like Ponch. And I thought that I was going to look like Ponch one day. Now you just punch. Now I look like I had too much punch. <laughs> now you're a Ponchy guy. <laughs> Ponchy. What? Yeah, he's a damn American yeah. me. Yeah, man. So, but like um, film, man. Like, I for me, when I think about film, movies, photographs, cameras, I think it's still from outer space shit, bro. To take a photo like this, right, and then later on, it, 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 it prints right. It's just right here, right. 
on an image or on your phone, how it's just on your phone, man. Even that's even, to, to me that's yeah. like the uh, that's like the greatest invention of all time. That no matter how many times you try to explain to me how it happens, I'm gonna forget, and it's gonna always be incredible, bro. Like I remember, like I remember, man. I, I, it's a funny, it's a funny joke right now, man. I thought, remember the old days, man, when you were, when you when you when you, when you, you could um take a photo of a naked chick and jerk off in the curtain. <laughs> Hopefully you won't blow yourself up at the same time. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious, dude. <laughs> well, Doug, you would have to take a photo like this of the and then and then blow up. Cock and hope, and then I'm pretty sure people yeah, were burning that big their head. Puff of like smoke and That's shit. what I said. Yeah. Back in the days, you could take a photo of a naked chick and masturbate. Nobody knows nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, dude. That's good. Yeah. So that right there, dude. Like Lisa, like she she she, she went to a badass school, right? And they made um pinhole cameras. You ever made one? Yeah. Yeah, I did for uh, like sixth grade or something like that. And it prints, right? Yeah, it's insane. How the fuck? How did you do? How did you make the fucking pin camera for, for our guests? Uh, you take a Quicker Oats uh, thing or a box. You can Look up a box. pin camera, Phillips. And then you um, you take your your raw film and then you splay it out. You put the top on the on the Quicker Oats thing, and then you time your shot. You just put you open up the pinhole. And you point it at the image, and it collects the image. But I, I, I think the, right. That's right. Not the film. It's the photo oh, paper. Where do you get the That's photo paper right. from? Uh, you can get it at like like photo stores and stuff. So you put the photo paper in the cardboard. Yeah. And how do you take the photo? You, the pinhole. That's why it's called the pinhole camera. So you you took you take the pin out, put it in. So you have a little. I think it was a shutter. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, Lisa or 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 Philip, but like you, you have a little, yeah, you'll move a paper and then the hole collects the image. Right, and then you and then and then you develop it and it's a fucking great picture. I mean, for for a fucking Quaker Oats box. Right, the image hits a mirror. And then the image hits the paper. That's right. Okay. Yeah. But it's still me. I still don't understand why that happens. What the? Um, why the image goes into that image? Right. It's fascinating to you. Yeah. Like how? Why? I mean, I don't is it know. dust? Is it nuclear? No. It's it's um, it's like reflection of light. It's reflection of light. So like okay, now I'm getting it. Okay, so I have actually a little background in this because I, I had photography when I was younger. Um, <laughs> I had a photography class in college. It was the last film photography, and then they switched to digital after I completed the class. Thanks, West Valley. Um, but yeah, so you have paper, and it's um, it's got silver and shit in it. It's got these chemicals already inside the paper. And so it the the chemicals react to light. They react to a certain type of. They react to, well, they react to light, mm. and and shadows. And so um, when you put this, so once you put the image from the mirror onto the paper, which is what the old, all those old cameras that you're talking about with the fucking like, uh, where the guy was like covering himself, those are virtually pinhole cameras. Um, but somebody invented that paper back then, huh? Way back then, it was made from so, silver back so th then. So that paper was around was, before they decided to make the camera. How right. it was used for something else? It's still in use. You can still find silver. It's called silver halide, um, and you can still find the paper at like photo. So, so um, why, why are the the I don't know, when I see those photos taken from the what are those cameras called that are in the curtain? Um, I don't know what they're called. Well, when those cameras, the photo always came out like too bright. It looked like right. it came out too bright. Yeah, yeah, they were always overexposed or underexposed. Like filming's, like, I mean, I I remember watching. Dude, one of my favorite videos to watch on YouTube Reflect is of um, light. someone takes a a camera, and this is like nineteen. This is prior to 1906, I believe. Um, and they run it down Market Street in San Francisco. And you see horse-drawn carriages, and you know there's no cars. It's just and like, 
And to me, that's the most fascinating, that, that we were doing this at a time when we didn't even have planes or anything else. Yeah, because I think the first, the, first, um, the first camera, film, projector, and all that shit to make a movie came to Mexico in 1897, huh? I have it written down in my book that we're going to talk about on the next podcast. Yeah, the, the Latino and, film and Bible, huh? Yeah, I have a, it's sort of, it's a, I've created my own Bible this time because um, I could But a lot of, but. So do you know who ended, invented the first camera though? No. The first motion picture camera? Um, it was called a kinetoscope. And it kinetoscope. Was, and it was invented by a Mexican. Can you guess what Mexican invented that? No. You actually turned me on to that this person was a Mexican. And I had no idea. He's like a Louis. Oh, uh, that's Mexican. right. Alexander Graham? No, uh, Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison. Yeah. Yeah, he was born in... Um, Thomas Edison is Mexican, I found right. out. But Thomas Edison was Mexican, huh? He was Mexican. Um, born in um, Chihuahua or Curacao? Uh, f- Zacatecas. Thomas Edison, born Mexican. Uh, yes. Thomas Elva Edison was born in Zacatecas to a Mexican father and white mother. You were the first anchor baby also. <laughs> he was a backwards anchor baby. Um, I can't remember the town, but we'll get into all of that. Uh, on Because uh, I, I think... Yeah. I think... Atta- so he invented the camera or the film, movie mo- film? He invented um, the kinetoscope, which was... Do you ever go to Disneyland and that thing you put your eyes through and you fucking turn the thing and it shows like a slow moving picture? Bro, I saw one on Family Guy, bro. Yeah, that's a kinetoscope. It was a kinetoscope. They used to have, they used to have those in um, Santa Monica Pier back in the days. Right. But the one, I, it ain't the one that has like a bunch of pictures moving fast, right? Yeah, that's a kinetoscope. Yeah, man. I saw a funny Family Guy episode where, um, where P- Peter goes, oh, look, um, vintage porno. And then he's watching it, and yes. it, and it's a uh, and it's a woman voting, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, "You do it, you rebel." I remember that episode. That's good. So you move it by your hand, huh? Yeah, the early ones where you move by your hand. So he invented those, and then that actually started to very quickly turn into filmmaking. I used to watch old school porno, man. It, it was crazy, man, man. I, I, my, my my fucking both arms were tired and shit. All right. <laughs> I, was a, I was ready to drive a steamboat, eh? You know what, man, though? I'll say this. I remember one of my early memories. The earliest memory I have of you um, was getting in the car in L.A. And um, we were driving around. And you were showing me all the cool things, like all where all the movies were made. Uh, those houses up on that hill. Like, you were, like, you told me that, like... Uh, actually, parts of Scarface were filmed um, in Long Beach. Like That's you right. had all this, yeah. dude. You like blew me away with how much you knew about like the mov- the film industry um, uh, in regards to Los Angeles history. Yeah, man. Most of the Keystone films. Yeah. The early Charlie Chaplin one with the one with the running with the, the cops that were just running around getting hurt. Right. They were shot Still in cops. Silver Lake. Okay. Oh uh, wow! Okay. Yeah, they used to, they used to have the the talkies, the, the I guess the silent movies. Right. We should. I think we should do an, another episode on on what you know about all that stuff because it's you, you have a huge vast knowledge of lo- like. Let me tell you guys something about Felipe Esparza, okay? Fucking vast knowledge on movies and um, who made what, what this was, all that stuff, and then in regards to L.A., but also like you have an amazing knowledge about Los Angeles. I love L.A. Like loves L.A. So I took him to where the um that movie this, this is a Lauren Hardy Laurel and Hardy movie. If you go look it up, it's called I think it's called The Music Man, but I'm not sure. And the whole the whole short movie it's Lauren Hardy carrying a piano up the stairs. Oh yeah, that's right. And I took you to you go did show the me that. You also showed me a theater where they used to play uh, silent movies. Yes, right there on uh, Melrose. Yeah. Not Melrose. La Brea. Yeah, well, La Brea. I can't remember, but you showed it to me, and I was like, man, it, it just fast. Like, like you have a lot of knowledge, and I don't think we should. I think we should. So over there by do Cantor's. An episode on it. Yeah, it was over by Cantor's. Fuck, we should do. T- uh, we, so we had that roast beef we sandwich. Talk about Cantor's. We got to go to Cantor's while I'm here. 
Yeah, man. This time you can sit the knee there. Yes, let's do that. Let's have lunch at Cantor's. History for fools, people. Also, man, um, we didn't really get too much into it, but um, you said that somebody was a was oh the recap a recap about um someone threatened me because you they said you don't know shit about San Here's Jose. I, wanna, I, I just want to cl- clear the air, you guys, because like there were a few, there wasn't a lot of bad comments. Most of the comments on our page are really good. I appreciate everybody who loves this show. I appreciate everybody who comes up to me. Shout out to Danielle uh, for coming up to me last night, and I'm gonna talk to Felipe about the suggestion later, but. Um, here's something, man. I have to do when we do history for fools. Like I have to like start going into everything right away. So not everything's gonna be 100. percent That's why it's called history for fools. But also, gangs is a hard issue because it was like illegal stuff. So there's nothing on the record. So and then also, I wasn't in a gang, and I and made that very clear. I also make it very clear that I'm a fucking pocho. So like I I, I like when you like this lady started going, but you don't. Somebody from said I was like, you don't know shit about gangs. You should keep your fucking mouth shut. And I was like. Fuck you, bitch. I just typed, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> fucking, don't fucking come in my fucking inbox. Like, go fucking my... I said something, but then it turned into her son sending me death threats. I had to block him because he was going on every one of my, like, fucking... Every, every, my, every Instagram. And, like, he was going to people who were like, butch, I love your work, or whatever, and going, well, did you know that he tells... He told my mom to fuck off. <laughs> And he was like, and when I see, like, he, like, he would send me my flyers to my Damn. shows. And I was like, okay, bro, I guess if you kill me now, there's evidence. So I just, it was weird that I got, I got that death threat from someone in San, especially yeah, this, from San Jose. Yeah, man, this person went way far, man. He even started re- 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 leaving reviews on Bush Comedy on Yelp. <laughs> Like fuck, this guy he sucks. And the next door rap too. <laughs> what was that one that you had to check in back in the day? What was it called? Oh man, pin. The joke's not gonna land now because <coughs> Foursquare. You remember Foursquare? Foursquare? He was even going on my Foursquare account. He was going in my fucking uh uh. Was it uh was it old not Facebook? MySpace. Friendship. He was on my MySpace, bro. Oh. He was hitting up my top eight. Being like, hey, do you know Butch Escobar told my mom to fuck off? But anyway, man, I'm sorry that I told your mom to fuck off, but I don't think it's appropriate to threaten my life over it. So. I was tripping, bro, about the gangs of Disneyland. We were talking about the it. The gangs of Disneyland was interesting. Weird, like, huh? Weird. Hardcore. Weird. Cause, Did you learn anything new from that? Yeah, man. All that undercover shit at Disneyland. Yeah. And also, man, did we talk about that there was a, there's a, cl- a private, private club? For elite people at yes. Disneyland, Club uh, 33. Club 33. We did not talk about that. Yeah, this, well, also this lot is Lot 33. Is it really? But yeah, nothing Have to do you with gotten Walt to Disney. eat at Club 33 or any of that stuff? Bro, I haven't, I haven't been to Disneyland since before I was vegan, bro. Oh, wow. I had an opportunity to go to Club 33, uh, but that bitch cheated on me, and we broke up afterwards. Damn. Before that happened. Club 33, bro. But um, Martin Rizzo, he he never been allowed in Club Thirty Three. But he's eating at the. I guess the, you can go there, but I don't know how you get get in there. That um that restaurant that's oh, right the, next to the Pirates of the Caribbean, the Blue Bayou. Yeah, that's for everybody, right? Yeah, that's for everybody. But it's right next to Club Thirty Three. I heard they got the like that bomb Monte Cristos. They have bomb ass Monte Cristos, bro. Yeah, bomb ass Monte. I've Christos. seen them made, bro. Bro, I uh, okay. <laughs> Um, do you go to uh, did, were you when, before you know? So my ex girl. Okay, you? here's here's what happened. Did you go to Disneyland a lot? Yes, Pete we had Munoz season passes. A she, lot, bought, she bought season passes for us every year. Pete Munoz goes a lot too. Bro. I I know, and I don't want to be compared to that person, but I. <laughs> sorry, Pete. Um, he sleeps with the ears. Dude, like I was sucked into it because I had a kid, and the girl that I was with was fascinated with Disney. And they were so happy that, you know, my son was interested. So her and her mom bought us season passes every year. I don't mean to be, I mean, they were wonderful. I appreciate that. I don't appreciate her doing what she did to me. But, um, yeah, we went to Disney World a bunch. Uh, we went to Disney World for nine days. And then every year we had season passes at Disneyland. Uh, you're talking to someone who's never even been to Disneyland in his life till he was like, I think I was like 33. Or whenever Bobby was a little You? Kid. 
Yeah, never been to Disney. You didn't go to Disney Legend. You were three, three. Never, bro. Never got bro. to go. My family went without me once, but uh, that's because I had to play football. But still, that sucks, bro. They rather go to Disney than go to your football game. Fuck, bro. I'm so mad, dude. That should have fuck with me too, right and now. And I bro. never make bro. me angry like it happened to me. You want to know what happened? I played football for two years. It was like, fuck this and fuck these people. I'm never doing this again. And I missed fucking Disneyland for that shit, dude. But yeah, I didn't get to go until I was an adult. But what was cool was I was bitter about it, so I always hated on Disneyland. And then going all that time, though, kind of melted me like with Disney. I, I, I like it. I'm not going to lie, bro. There's something fascinating about First it. time I went to Disneyland with my parents and my whole family, it was expensive. Cause um, back then it wasn't like one price, and you pay and you get another rides. You would you would you would, oh, you would have to buy you, to pay you, would, you you would have to buy a booklet right. of, of ride tickets like they do at the carnival or like they do at the at anywhere like like in um, the Santa, Santa Cruz. Right. Yeah. Philip, look up um, look up um Disneyland old school book booklet and put it up there. Yeah, man. So you would have to buy you you were. You would pay to get into Disneyland. Right. And then once you're in there, you got to stand in line. Oh, wait. You still had to pay, and then you had to pay to get the yeah, book? Yeah. You got to get a booklet. Oh, fuck And the all booklet, that. bro, it had, like, letter A. It, like, you would buy the whole booklet. Right. And, like, or have, like, maybe two A's, and those are the good rides, like right. Space Mountain and Matterhorn. But then you got the B's, the C's, and the D's. The, Tons of D's, I bet. The D's, bro, were all, like, the... Like the merry-go-round, oh, the bullshit ass ride, yeah. the Mad Hatter, the cups. Yeah, I fucking hate those stupid ass cups. Yeah, dude. So you would have to have a booklet. Once your booklet runs out, you either buy more tickets or you go home. And then how much was like a whole booklet? Do you remember? Bro, I don't remember, bro. I just know they're expensive. That's crazy. I wonder when they stopped doing that. Um, having like, because I remember, because I. Uh, I mean, I don't remember actually, because I've never been to Disneyland, but I know that at some point they started charging. A lot. I mean, it's a thousand dollars to go for two days to Disneyland <laughs> right now, like eleven hundred bucks. You're I, talking about California? Yeah, like for two days to get a to get a two day. It's called a two day hopper, like park hopper. Well, that's a badass hopper. And like, and and um, it's it's almost eleven hundred dollars for it. I think it might even be more. Five years ago, it was eleven hundred bucks. Damn, bro. When I was a kid, like, I went to Universal Studios, bro. I've been to Universal Studios probably more than Magic Mountain and Disneyland and Northbury Farm put together. I've never been to Magic Mountain. Bro, I've been to Disney, Universal Studios first when I was a little kid, dog. It's how old school I went. They had they had a, a, a sh you know, you go watch those Universal Studios shows and they show you how they do Knight Rider. Or no, they show you how they made, um, they show you how they made movies. A -team. And, and yeah, A Team. I, I went. To Universal Studios once, and it was A Team, uh, ET. You get to like get a picture on the bike with ET, and then um, you get to lift the A Team van, and then there was the Back to the Future, DeLorean, and then Jaws. I remember Jaws. Fool, I went to Universal Studios. This how old school and all these shows were. I they had a thing where they show you how they made. Laverne Steve Austin, the million dollar man. Oh wow. Dun, 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 no dun, way. Dun, 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 dun. And they got this this white boy that was in shape with little shorts. Right. And little 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 hair, <laughs> little Bruce Jenner hair before he was um Caitlin. And little Adidas. <laughs> and they showed him running on the on the, on the green screen. And they showed the green they showed him running on the green screen. And then in our art our um screen, it was him running super fucking fast, dog. Right. Super it fucking. made him look fast, but he wasn't. Super fucking fast. And then they showed a guy that was like supposed to be like a, like a Superman. Yeah. And he laid on top of the same green screen and with an art screen. And little them motherfucker was flying. Ah, oh, okay. Dun, that's, dun, dun, that's like, dun, that was like dun, the technology dun, dun. back then. And then after we saw that, we were moved to another room. Okay. And there was a, a guy there who would look like what you call a typical nerd, like, you know, but what a nerd is supposed to look like, you know? Okay. Not like the one you see in a porno with a big peanut and so shit. You're talking about, like, 80s nerds. We yeah, we chubby. Like his, and they weren't cool. This fool had his member's only jacket tucked in. <laughs> anyway, so this guy was sound, and he was teaching, he, he was he was doing, like, a, a visual movie score for us, how they do it. Okay. So, but, but also, he's deadpan. Right. 
And you guys do, and whenever you do a show like this. So he was talking like that. So the fool be like this. So the, so the, they'll show like um, a, a, a person walking, and the fool will be like this with um, with something making the no, the sound for the shoes. Behind them. Really? Like click, click, yeah, click, click, click. Wow. So he was the sound guy, bro. He was the, the score. They don't have that no more, but that was no, what I saw. No, they have a guy with fucking electronics. Bro, you start to show a kid nowadays that, right. they'll fucking start crying, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they would. So, and now the the rise of universe, like when, when I, when I, and then I went with Joy Medina and his family to Universal Studios. We, we had free tickets, and I took Philip. And back then, bro, they had they had the ET ride. The ET ride, bro. Yeah, I remember that. That's you get on the bikes, right? And it was like you fucking. It feels oh, like, you get on the bikes, and it feels, bro. They show a green, like a screen, and they're mo- you're moving like this, and you're moving up, and they show nice. they blow they blow air at you, and it feel it feels like you're really riding a fucking bike, bro. And then when it gets to that part where fucking the cops are in front of us, the fucking the motor the the bike you're in. And everybody around you, they start tilting back too, Dope. and we fly, bro. That's like early uh, Star Tours. Yeah. So now that ride that we got on now is a Harry Potter ride on the broom, which I'm too fat to get on. No way. They really were like, you can't bro, get on, you're too heavy. I went to that ride the first time, and I th- and I got on it, and yeah. it closed, right? Right. And I went back a year later, and it shit went, I went. I got on the ride. I got on the ride. Right. And it didn't close, dog. And they took me to another one, another go. And they went, something wrong with it. They don't close. So they, then they took me to another <laughs> an, another chair right. for the ride. Yeah. But it was like away from the real ride. It was by itself. <laughs> where they could watch you, where they could watch you put it on. <laughs> and that shit wasn't close, bro. I felt like that guy from the, the pulling dynamite trying to bend that Tupperware, bro. <laughs> Yeah, dude. And he gives it back, and they can't have that boat. That's a rough day. So, dude, That's I don't get on it. Park. I don't get on it, and I look behind me, and there's other fat motherfuckers who look just like me, bro. Like a white dude, a black dude, right. an Asian guy. They're all like two, two eighty at least, you know, or above. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, he goes, you too, you too. I thought it was broken. I thought it was broken. We're all talking. <laughs> it's like a group of you guys. Bunch of fat dudes agree that it's broken. Something's wrong. <laughs> Yeah, it has to be broken, right? Yeah, you too. <laughs> Dude, th- follow us. They opened a door for us, and they just kicked us out, bro. Gen- <laughs> Gen- Gen- they opened the door, they're all, hey, the ride for bigger dudes is in here. <laughs> and that's what I thought, bro. He goes, yeah, they're probably taking us to a bigger ride, eh? Right, yeah. He goes, yeah, bro, yeah, bro. We're going to be, yeah, bro. I looked at him right there. I looked at him, yeah. The door went the, out into the parking yeah, lot. Yeah, everybody else is flying in brooms. Right. We're going to be flying in push brooms out. <laughs> They gave you janitor hats. <laughs> We're gonna be flying in push brooms, bro. <laughs> so, you know when you when you get out of the ride on um, any ride at Disneyland, any ride at Six Flags, any ride at Universal, as soon as you get off that ride, there's merch for that ride. Right. There's a picture of you. So when we open up that door, yeah. bro, there were nothing but stairmasters <laughs> and treadmills <laughs> and a diet recommendation. <laughs> yeah, and how, how to fast. Yeah. Now nah, there was a, nah, there was none of that, but there was just nothing. It was right. the alley, bro. Yeah. And then we came around the other side. Like I said, it's like here's, you, you're you're back out in the parking lot. Yeah, so that's how how many times. Also, at Universal Studio, I've seen Night Rider, bro. I remember Night Rider. The ATM Rider. stunt show yeah. and the baddest show right now, the fucking um, the Water World stunt show is a hundred times better than the movie. Is that still going there? Because it's so good, right? I saw Miami Vice when I was there. Damn! I it saw it too. Yeah, they had the jet skis, yeah, right? The jet skis and, and the, the suits cars and the little cars that went backwards and shit. Yeah. Dude, now they have a a a, a Fast and the Furious ride. Okay. But- when you when you're inside that big old tram, right? And you go inside the hole, and then like this guy like like fake like Diesel shows up and goes, "Hey, hey we, we're gonna get." Uh, we're gonna go through all there. It's like yeah. a Vin Diesel grumbling. A Vin at Diesel, you. A Vin Diesel, <laughs> bro. The hologram look real, bro. Right. It looks like the chicks and the dudes. We're all family here. You got ready? 
and then this cop shows up, bro, and then the it goes like you're going fast. They're fucking shooting at us, bro. First of all, I didn't get to see shit that day because I lost my 3D glasses on the ride, dog. Uh, got, so I had to like borrow Lisa bro, real quick. You don't have good luck with rides at fucking at uh, at, at at Universal Studios. <laughs> Maybe you should give it a rest. <laughs> bro, the first they have a picture of you up at Universal Studios, dude. <laughs> They're like, if you see this guy, make his visit shit. I took my niece, Gia. And she was like four, and she was all excited about going to Universal Studios. And as soon as we jump into that King Kong ride, she starts crying, bro, crying and screaming, screaming like, ah, hysterical, bro, like hysterical crying, bro, like, oh wow, like like grabbing Lisa, like trying to hold on to her, like crying, 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 freaking out. I don't know what happened, bro, but the the whole ride shuts down. And we're in a we're in a fucking tube now, with nothing but white screen like saps. So you realize this whole this, we saw everything with no camera, bro, with no film and no oh, nothing. Wow. And then they apologized to us that they really broke. Did they give you a voucher or anything? You should have demanded a voucher. Disneyland, they'll give you shit for free. They'll give you like free ride, like front of the ride vouchers and shit. Bro, I would have for a corn dog at least. Yeah, I would have gone for. I would have been all, hey, you ruined my fucking experience. But yeah, I mean, next time. Yeah, man. Some of the stuff at, the, at Disney at Universal Studios that you get rid of, like some people don't really know, like who the fuck Frankenstein is anymore. Right. Oh, they sell Frankenstein there. Yeah. People know who you, the fuck Waterworld is. It's probably that cool though. But it's badass show, dog. That's a bad. That's a badass shit. That badass. people go. People go in there and probably go. It's a movie. Right. And they go see the movie. There's a point of the movie. Four hours long. Mad at it, bro. Go see Yellowstone. But it's good, dude. Cause you remember those jet skis from Miami Vice? They come out of there, bro, in a boat, and they're fucking shooting, oh, and they're gliding, yeah. and they're gliding, That's bro. Right. You feel the fucking heat, like just like Miami Vice. On the explosions and stuff. On the explosion, they're fucking. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, man. I went to the Universal Studios and fucking um, in Florida. I'm going to have to give that one a thumbs down only because you guys don't have the tram. They don't have the tram. It's all shows. Dude, Universal Studios is the tram here. It's the tram. Right. You have to. That's what I imagine. I always like, oh, it's probably a bigger, doper tram. No, bro. It's Florida. You just walk around like a sap. That sucks. Fuck that. So, bro, and they have a, so they, they have rides over there that don't have an LA. Like, they have a, a Twister. You oh, know, from Twister the from the movie? That's so, an old movie, dude. So, they put everybody behind a gate. And you just feel the wind and shit flying at you. <laughs> they just have guys come out with those fucking, <laughs> with those blowers, those leaf blowers. But, but you're from Florida. You don't want to see that right. shit. Right. You know, we already have bad weather here. Why the fuck do we want more bad weather? I know. Like, they have Twister. We have the earthquake. Right. Eh? Yeah. Oh, we do have the earth. Dude, if you go to, like, San Francisco, there's a uh, the uh, Exploratorium in San Francisco has an earthquake uh, simulator and you you wait in line and then you load up into this house and then an earthquake starts and then shit starts falling around around you it's safe but i like i remember uh hell of times people going you want to get on no i fucking sat i was like i live in california we have earthquakes all the time why the fuck am i gonna fucking want to experience a fake earthquake but people love it too people love it and um there's there's the there's always like the I don't they don't I don't think they have it anymore at Universal Studios, but um, there was like a a part of the Universal Studio when you walked in to the left, where it was like a like a Western stunt show, and motherfuckers would be shooting each oh, other. It'd be in the middle of the street. Yeah, that was cool. I remember seeing that. I love that. That was fucking dope. And then pulleys on their back. Yeah, and so then they shoot them. They like fly back and shit. And then they land and they fucking fall from the top, bro. Land on their back on a on a fab on a mattress. Yeah, that I see. I remember seeing that. That was cool. Yeah, man. They, they, there's a movie. I don't know what movie it is. Maybe it's um that movie um with with uh, Tom Cruise when uh, when aliens attack or Mars attack. Oh, Mars. Um. It's not Mars Attacks. It's um, it's an old War Orson Welles. Um, yeah, Attack of the World. Oh, uh, yes. What huh? is it? War of the Worlds. War of yes. Worlds. I guess, did you see the one with Tom Cruise? Yes. You see that plane crash? Yes. 
Well, they have the whole plane, bro, at Universal. No way. So the tram takes you there. Right. And the fucking plane is there, bro, with smoke and everything. That's fucking And, it, and it's the actual actual duplicate side of an airplane, bro. Like, it's real big. Yeah, it's a big airplane. And then the houses around there are all fucked up. And it looks like a real situation. Yeah. And then normally when you, you go around the corner, you see the fucking, um, yeah, the fucking Psycho. Psycho? Base, base Motel. Oh, from Psycho. That's right. And t- I remember and, seeing that when and, I went there. Yeah, and then when you pass by Base Motel. It's small. Norman chases you with a knife. Oh, really? Don't they show the real one, though? And it's like The real the, house is small, yeah. It's small. It's like a little tiny house, right? Yeah. With no back. With no back. Okay. The way I like them. <laughs> yeah, okay. What time you got, Playboy? 136, we're at. We'll keep going then to 24. And then we'll, and, and close that two hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you said 24 hours. I was like, that's... that's so yeah, cool. so... um. When, when you you love films, right? When you were little, films, like cause yes. we were talking about Latino cinema later on. Right. But my my dad loves movies, bro. Maybe that's why I have a love for films, and I I love Universal too because my dad always loved films. Like his he, my dad, my dad was old school. Like my dad loved Tarzan. Right, he loves that shit. Like Tarzan, yeah. Charles Bronson, Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Those are his boys. Steve McQueen, bro. Right. You know anything they're in. <laughs> He or, loved or, those movies. Or like that that movie, um, The Good, The Bad and Ugly with V um uh, with John Van Cleef, I think his name. Van Cleef. Yeah, and um Clean Eastwood and Eli Wallach. Yeah. From he plays I love The Good, the, the Bad and the, the Ugly. Such a good Blondie. Movie. You know who you are? You're a hijo de la oh! <laughs> oh! Um it, he my dad. Yeah. Loves that movie, and he thought for a long time that Eli Wallach was a Spanish actor from Spain. Oh, really? And he's Jewish. He's Jewish. But my dad thought that he was Spanish. But he, I, I, he thought all those dudes in that movie were Mexican. He thought that Eli Wallach was Spanish, cause wow. he, but he's Jewish, right? Yeah. But, but he, I don't know where he got that accent or where he picked it up, but the cadence, the movements of his body... The way he talks, the look, is a total Mexican right. of that time. Yeah, it's very convincing. I mean, it's a stereotypical Mexican if you play him now in the, in 2023 right. or maybe in 1990. But at that time when that movie was written, which was um, the, toward, the movie was written, the good and the bad and the ugly, the movie is set and towards the end of the Civil War. Right. So it's 18th, the end of the Civil so War. it's like 18th century... 18, probably 1856. Yeah, 19th century, I mean, yeah. Yeah, and um, because they're trying to find his gold. But my favorite scene of that uh, of that movie, bro, in Clean Eastwood, the bad, the good, the bad, the ugly, is where um, when um, fucking uh, the Mexican guy, Eli Wallach, he takes Clean Eastwood to a mission because um, he the whole time he's been dragging Clean Eastwood through the desert, bro, trying to kill him. His, yeah, that's right, on a rope. His yeah. whole face is chapped because he backstabbed um, him earlier, right? So that's this payback. Right. So he finds out that he has, he knows the name of the, of the fucking, um, of the, of the, what, what they call those plates where you die? Uh, your tombstone. Your tombstone, yeah. He knows the name of the tombstone where all the, all the stolen gold is, Right. Oh, okay. He knows it, right? Because yeah. um, that guy, w- when that soldier is dying, he tells Clinis where the gold is. So, and when he comes back with the water, that's when he gets all mad. Anyways, so Clinis is dying in the movie, right? But he knows where the gold is. So he takes him to this mission, and he goes, "My brother works there. My brother is a priest. He practically runs the place." He gets to bro. His brother just like fucking. Um, I remember like, that. His I brother, he that. don't run shit, dog. He like he doesn't fuck, do shit. Yeah. He's a priest, but he's like, he's like a nobody. Nobody, he, right? Yeah, he practically nobody. runs the place, right? So, anyways, cleaning was getting better. His house is getting better, and uh, he keeps looking at him like, 
the TV gets better. Right. So there's a, there's a scene where um, Eli Wallach and his brother, and they they have a brother bro, brother to brother quarrel. Okay. And it's about um, his brother is telling him like, to cause you 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 didn't even come go to our our mother's funeral. He goes, I didn't know she died. You never cared about nobody. Then he goes, you're a cheap, you're a gambler, you're a rapist, you're a this. What you want me to do? <laughs> you want me to sit down and do nothing and take it? Anyway, they get into be a put, put it, he, he put him down for being a priest, dog. Right. So then they they get into a fucking <laughs> fist fight, bro. Yeah. A fucking fist fight, right? Right. A fucking fist fight, right? And fucking Clean East was half dead one night watching the whole fight and listening to everything. So when when they're leaving, they're back on their boat on their on their fucking um on their on their carriage, right, with the horses. And then um Clean East was smoking a cigarette. He just rolled one up. And then and then fucking Eli Wallace starts bullshitting, bro, like a lot of Mexican people I know. My brother, right? He loves me, my brother. <laughs> my brother loves me, He's my just, brother. Even though it's like... It's like... bullshit, dog. <laughs> my brother loves me. He said, hey, Tuco, don't go, don't go, don't go. That's so Don't go, funny, don't go, man, don't, yeah. go don't go, don't go. I said, no. <laughs> take food with you. No, I'm already full. Do you think he like with a bunch of Mexican take people? Take food. Take food with you. No, I'm already full. I'm already full. I'm already full. I'm already full. My brother, he loves me. And Clint Eastwood remember what he saw. He, he takes a puff of his cigarette, and he gives it a two coast, and he goes, "Everybody needs a brother." Yeah. And then Tuco looks at him like this, like. <laughs> 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 but that scene right there, like, he must have hung out and really studied that character, right. bro, because the way he pulled that off, yeah. you just you gotta know, huh? Because he's bullshitting, right? right? He's bullshitting. How many friends have you had bullshit like that? All the time. I have a fr- Dude, my friends fight all the time. And they're like, man, I love so-and-so. And I'm like, is that why you were fucking talking shit to him the other day, dude? Like, My brother. We get along. So, like, I have two fr- I have friends. Two of my buddies are brothers. And they constantly fucking fight. And when they're not near, they're, they're constantly fighting. And the only time they get along is when they're not near each other. And they're talking about how much they love each other. Or someone's beating up one of them. And they got to go fucking beat, like, jump in a fight for them. And all of a sudden, it's like my fucking brother. That's, yeah. I mean, even though uh, Eli Wallach plays a very uh, stereotypical Mexican of the, of that time, it was a good one, bro. And um, I, I wish it was good, bro. He didn't play. A, it, I I I didn't see any. any you were anything. impressed by. It. I was you impressed. Like, you didn't feel like slided. Because I thought he was Mexican too. Because my right. dad told me he was, he was Spanish, right. so I kind of felt proud, you know. Right. Yeah. But that's what I mean, bro. Like to see like somebody was even though. With your brown brown skin in a movie, you know, holding it down, man. Right. You feel good, eh? You're like, good, hey, sure. you know what? If he could do it, I could do well, it. Well, self representation is really yeah. important, and that's the thing, man. Is like, and that, I mean, again, we'll talk about it when we get to the to it, but it is, bro, because um, representation is very important. Because um, I, I, I had a meeting with uh with uh with somebody last week about a show, and they were telling me that they're um. They just finished producing a, a, the documentary or a, on a black Barbie. Oh, okay. You know, was a, the, I thought that the black Barbie came around during the sixties, but she came around during the eighties, like during, the during Miss America. Okay. Yeah, we have a Mexican. Um, Do we bar- have a Mexican? Barbie? Yeah, man, she's called Barbacoa. Sounds delicious. Yeah, bro. <laughs> she has wet legs. Bro, bro, she comes, she comes, bro, with a little ass. She, she, she don't have a, a she don't have a, a Barbie beach house, but she has a little a little van, bro, where she sells tacos out of it. <laughs> it's called Tacos La Huera. She, she sells them at the uh, at the Santi Alley market. Yeah, bro, Tacos La Huera. With like banking on it. Yeah, um, 
Uh, like, bro, like it's interesting to me the image. Hey, remember, remember that like, like if you saw a movie, bro. Yeah. Where a dude has a big ass beard. Right. And he's bald, and he's not a terrorist. Right. Or he's not a Viking. He's not a bad guy. He's a good dude. He's not a gladiator. Right. I would he's, love to see that. Team, bro. He has, he has no piercings. Right. He's just a normal dude that happened to have a beard. Right. And he's the love interest, bro. I would, l- I would fucking and, murder. And he to fucking, see that. and he and he has kung fu, bro. Murder. And and the bad and then like, and the bad guy is a guy with good hair, bro. Right. With a good he's face. A good looking dude. And who lifts all the time, bro. Right. He's in good shape. Yeah. He's but in they, good wins all the time. And you let this guy, bro, do like that. Who visited his father with diabetes in the hospital? I mean, you watch this movie, bro. You're gonna be like, "Fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. fuck yeah. yeah!" When people saw me in that commercial I did many uh, during the during the fucking uh, the fucking soccer thing they have, what's it called? Oh, uh, the World uh, Cup. World Cup, yeah. When I did the World Cup, I was like, you know, my long hair. I right. was doing a, a Honda Fit commercial. Okay, bro. People that. I would meet, I'll run up to paisas or anybody do with my body stature. Yes. And look at me and go, hey, I saw you, man. How could I do it? Right. Yeah. No, it, it like, that's the thing, man. You could do it, man, but right. it's going to take a long time, too. It's going to, dude, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> but I like, had to, I, I, people lie to you. I had to sleep in alleyways. I get, <laughs> I get, I had to sleep in the dumpster behind the comedy store. You know how many times I, um, I, I get a lot of dudes who will come up to me, um, that are big bearded bald dudes who are like, I love what you do, man. Um, and they're the same thing. Like I like, cause you, you don't see typically stand up comedians, bald bearded, big dudes that are funny. I mean, I've seen big dudes try to go up or biker looking dudes at like open mics but i'm i mean there's not a lot of guys like me out there i feel like i know that, and then I, the people like like you 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 look like that because that's your look you right. know what i mean you you yeah it's just what came how, about how about those dudes that are already good looking right but they want to be bald with a beard with hair already that's that shit kills except me, who you are except who you are i had to accept who i was i'm a fat fucking hairy guy but the thing is is like um, I feel like representation is like in that way. Like you don't you, see Brian Posehn that type of character a lot in places, huh? No, no. And Brian's a bit different because he's kind of like he's nerdy and like you could even though he's a big bald dude, you're he's not, a bus driver. I look intimidating, and until you get to know me, until you talk to me, we don't have time for that. You're like you're you're like <laughs> you're like oh he's actually a nice guy. He's friendly. He's peaceful. He's loving. You know, but I don't know how many times, like, especially when I first got into comedy, people would come and be like, oh, you're such a nice guy. When I first saw you, I thought you'd be so scary and mean. And it's like... Um, you, you ever kick somebody out of the club and they look back at you and go, man, you're actually a nice guy, man. Yeah, I actually have had that. Where I, they've, like, come up and shake my hand and apologize. Have you ever grabbed somebody and kicked them out and then later on outside talked to them and told them, listen, man, I had to grab you? Mm-hmm. Because those guys out there are killers. Oh, we had, dude. I had to, uh, the only way I have, uh, uh, this way, I look like I did my job and, and kicked you out, and they know that you ain't going to come back. Hopefully, you're not going to come back, right? Definitely. And um, those guys, I don't want you to get your ass beat. I, I know you're, you were, it was, I know you were, I know it's not your fault, but I had to kick you out. Because right. I don't want you to get your ass beat. I had, I had a guy one time. They don't listen, though, sometimes, huh? Some of them don't, but this one particular case, I had this guy who, this girl, and she was a friend of mine, actually, um, was beating up his girlfriend in front of the bar. Beating the fuck out of her. And nobody was doing anything about it, and the guy came in and he punched he punched my friend, like, once, and she fell off, gave her a big old black eye, got his girlfriend, and took off. And he, which is something I would do, bro, I'm sorry, if you're fucking beating up my girlfriend, I'm gonna try to help my girlfriend. Um, and so he comes back the next day, they're drinking and I'm like, you can't be here anymore because they're going to kill you if they see you here. Like you can't. And so like in front of everybody, I kicked him out and and treated him like shit. But I think he knew, like, I think we made the agreement before that I was going to do that. So it made him look good and and, it made it, it kept him from getting the fucking shit kicked out of him. Roadhouse. Shit. It's a new Roadhouse movie, bro. Is that, is that... 
Is there really? With um, uh, that guy Gyllenhaal. Did you like the first Roadhouse? Fuck yeah. Okay. Fuck yeah. Okay. But the new one with Gill- Gyllenhaal and McGregor. Jake Gyllenhaal and and Conor McGregor. Yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal. He Did you plays- just say Conor McGregor, the fighter? The US- yeah. Oh, God. Jesus. Jake Gyllenhaal plays a guy that used to be an MMA fighter, and now he's a bouncer. The story of everybody's life. Jake Gyllenhaal does. Yeah. I don't see Jake Gyllenhaal as a threatening person. Like, Bro, Prostix Way, they didn't look threatening too, bro. That's true. With a little ballerina fucking fools up. That's true, though. He was. He had a little grace in that movie too. You could tell he like had a little like dirty dancing grace in that movie. Yeah, man, he walked like he, he, like if you watch the movie, he's walking like he's trying to show everybody his butt, bro. That's right, he does do that. He has that tight butt walk. Have you ever watched Trailer Park Boys? Yes. Fuck yeah, dude. You know the guy that holds the drink? Yeah. What's his name? Mikey. Mikey. No, yeah. Rick. Is it Ricky? Ricky. No, Ricky, the crazy one with the sweatpants. Julian. Julian. Okay. You know what? Well, well, Julian. You know why he's dressed all in black? Why? Patrick Swayze, bro. It really? I didn't know. It's yeah. like, is that his thing in the, yeah, in the show? Yeah, Die it's, Hard. And, bro, uh, it's been so long since and, I saw um, that show. Bec- and, um, from that movie, Roadhouse. Right. That's fucking hilarious. Roadhouse. Yeah, so they're gonna make a new Roadhouse. The Roadhouse. My favorite scene about Roadhouse, bro, is this scene where this girl with big ass boobs. You know, like she's flashing everybody. Remember that scene? And there's a dude right there with him, and she goes like this. He goes for a hundred, for a for a, for two for two hundred dollars, you could do whatever you want with her. And that guy starts grabbing her booth in front of everybody, bro. Goes, what are you doing? I don't have two hundred dollars. <laughs> Classic, bro. It was a classic. I don't have two hundred dollars. I watched that movie. I was too young to see a movie like that, but I was at my uncle's. Everybody was asleep, and I put on HBO and I watched that movie. And young, early twelve-year-old adolescent Butch watched Patrick Squeezy fuck that hot-ass doctor against the wall, and I thought that's how people did it for the longest time. Like I thought that that was like a possible thing between two human beings. No. Nah. You can't fight no. You gotta be a pro- you gotta be a professional dancer. <laughs> yeah. You have to be a really in shape doctor, I think. There's not many sex scenes in that movie, huh? Just that one. Just huh? that one. But it was it was really good. I remember being a kid thinking like, cause she was hot. To me, she was so hot in that movie. I, I know when Chupa when when you break down movies and you go like this, come on, man. I do it they, now. They would have killed that fool. Right. I, I mean, even good movies now I'll go. That wouldn't really happen. That like, dude own the town. Yeah, like I, you can't help but like go. Come on, bro. Oh, this, oh, this, 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 like this guy owns the town. He's got this huge mansion with all these animals everywhere. He's like the quintessential bad guy. That's what I want to ask you, bro. Oh, he he was not a bouncer. He was a cooler. Um, Patrick Swayze. Yeah, was it was. Cooler. Right. Okay, you've been in the ball business, bro. Yeah. Is that is uh, is there? The people really looking for bouncers all over that all over the world, like like there's Patrick no, Swayze, no where he like there's is there a, a special bouncer that shows up? Like we and, need to and, bring in the and, ringer and, here. And, and, and clears up the bar because that's what he did, bro. He was right. like pretty much undercover boss. Right. The first day, right. he found out who was stealing, and he right. got rid of him. He found right. out who was selling drugs, got rid of him. Right. He found out he was a fucking underage chick, he was got like rid a of him. Right. Yeah. Do they hire people to do that in bars? Fuck no, bro. That's what I, like, there, there's no... No. Because when I, when I saw it, I was, I was like, I want to be that dude. Yeah. The dude that they, no they hired to clean up bouncer, shit. Bro. You, you get, you're a big dude. And you don't fact, go bounce to bounce to close. You, you're dead, huh? Bro, you can't. You don't even... That's the thing is, is like, I'll be honest with you. I, I, like, if you're a bouncer that's getting into fights, you're not a good bouncer. If you're a bouncer that's constantly getting physical with people, you're not a good bouncer. And so, like, but that bar would have that bar where Patrick Swayze showed up to fix it. It would have shut down years, months ago before he showed up. Someone huh? would have sold it. That's how bars work. <laughs> That's how bars work. There's a is that like uh, this a bar? A biker club would have came in. This bar's out of shape. We need to hire someone to come in and bounce people around. Like I know this guy it. that's five foot two and dances. Right. You sell it for a hundred thousand more than you bought it for, and then that guy has the fucking problem. 
And that's how it works. There's, there's no fucking, there's no, there's not even professional bartenders anymore. You know what I mean? There's no like fucking like guy that's like, that's his. Special. Yeah, man. When I saw that, I said, oh, yeah, I want to be that dude. But then when I saw that a bouncer get hit with a, with a fucking lock in Tony Soprano, I said, nah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Because the owner come in here doing anything, huh? What about when, when Tony Soprano beat up that one bouncer at the fucking Bing, the, at the Bing? Not the one that got hit with a lock. Is that the same one? By Ralphie. He fucks him up, dude. I, Ralphie, I just finished watching Gladiator. Um, That's right. That's right. <laughs> and, he, and he was all coked out, bro. He was. He killed him, right? He went, no, he yeah. came with a lock. He just <laughs> sure fucked his eye up. Right. Like, I got fucked up all the time by people, dude. That's right. Yeah, dude. I mean, you know, like, bouncing's not a good thing to be for a long time. If you've been a bouncer for, like, more than five years... He... Well, I was a bouncer for one day. Yeah, dude. Let me tell you the only thing I did, bro. This is what I did one time, and I, and I, and, I, and I still feel like it was too much. Okay. There was a dude that he wanted to pee real bad, and he went inside a girl's bathroom to pee. Okay. And he pulled it out, and the girl was running out, and I thought he want to get out, and I went in there and I grabbed his ass, bro, by the back of the neck, like right. I. I, I yeah, I, know I, I wrapped his shirt That's like this. That's when you do that, yeah. And then I, I, I took him all the way out. I just pushed him like this. Away. I pushed him away while the, my two homies were pushing food all the way. Right. And I gave him to uh, the guy that was 100 times bigger than me. And I, I just gave and it to him. Like I nothing. gave it to him. And yeah. He was like the door bouncer. Come a little bouncer and then walking around. So I just gave it to him. Right. And that fool kicked his ass out. Fucking threw him out. And that fool started to come. I didn't know what happened to him. He tried to come back and that's me. He he tried to come and fight you. He tried to come, no, he, he I, when I grabbed him, he didn't know who I was. I right. got him behind. Yeah, you know, and then the the other bouncer grabbed him, and then they, they kicked him out. Yeah, I mean that's when you do that. That's when you do grab someone by the fucking neck because they're kind of violating the privacy of those women. But I mean, like normally, it would be, I remember one of my things was like, look, man, see this tiny square? This bar is a tiny. It was like it was like the size of this place. I go. The whole earth belongs to you. You do whatever you want. This is the only place in the world you can't be right now. So please, get the fuck out of here. A lot of times they'd be like, oh, okay. How about you go have that earth and give me this square? Because all, <laughs> all I need is a little bit. I don't need the whole world. <laughs> yeah, no one ever thinks like that when they're ripped. That's what I that was. That, that was what well, that was in my brain, but this came out. Fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> I don't play four square. <laughs> but I still, you know, I mean, like, you still have to, like, get in a fight every now and then. Remember in, in fucking Roadhouse, one of the guys go tell me, call me, uh, call me gay. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> that's, a, that's fucking movies so classic. Only in movies, man, can you hit somebody's head on a, on a fucking table and the table breaks and that guy can still walk away. Yes. Yes, that's the other thing. The physics in movies has made me like realize, like, oh, you can't survive half the shit that. Let me tell like you, when man. someone hits someone over the head with a pan, and they're all, and then they wake up. Like, how many times does someone get knocked out in a movie, and they're totally fine later? You know, and it's like, bro, if you really got knocked out in fucking real life, you're suffering from hemorrhages and concussions, and you should go to the doctor right away. Even the guy who knocked you out, man, he's, a, he's fucking, he has a broken wrist. He has a broken, his fucking fist is all fucked up, dude. But it's like, that's the thing is like, movies made me think like, oh, physical fighting has no long-term repercussions. Yeah, man, especially when like the karate movies, bro. Like oh, in dude. real fights, they come at you all at once. When you watch Bruce Lee movies, how how bad how badass were you in the backyard breaking fucking fences? And well, shit? I, was, I was that kid, bro, that had all ripped pants now, bro, from the front. <laughs> from what? Like for crotch? Yeah. From fucking doing karate kicks, bro. Oh, uh, from like fucking eye kicking and shit. Yeah, bro, I, I would do a karate. I would roundhouse it with my fucked up J.C. Penny pants, and they'll rip, man, from the front. Yeah. My mom wouldn't sew it, so I would go to school with a whole man pants. Uh... But I remember watching that. Getting that magazine, um, Black Belt or Karate. I remember that magazine. And he had those Chuck Norris pants. Right. With the elastic right here, bro. Oh, that's, yeah, I remember those. I, I thought about Anito's pants. But I'm thinking now, of, like, as an adult, 
How stupid was I to think I need those pants? And how stupid are those pants? No. Like, what the fuck you need? How how many fights are you getting into that you need these elastic you pants? You something? The moment you talked about those pants, in my mind, I went, I'm an adult now. I can afford those pants. I'm going to look up online after I get off this podcast and buy those pants. <laughs> I will wear those pants only to pick shit off the floor. And then my fucking at butt won't show away. Walk around in like Chuck Norris pants. Man, fuck Chuck Norris pants. Man, I want a shirt. I, I want a pants that when you fucking bend over, your shirt and everything comes out. Eh? <laughs> yeah, that's called regular life for me. Yeah, man. When I was when I was the kid, I was stupid, bro. Like I would see like people like in movies wear tennis shoes and they're running fast, and I figured that's what I need. A tennis shoe, not working out and eating right. less. No. <laughs> That's what I need, the, the $6 million shoes. I need an enhancer. When I was a kid, bro, that's all I wanted, bro, because the $6 million man, Steve Austin, he used to wear a red tracksuit with red Adidas. So okay. I was thinking, that's all I need, bro. Right. If I get the red striped Adidas. You're good to go. You're going to fuck everybody up. I was an idiot, bro. I would get brand new shoes. He goes, yeah, these are going to make me run faster. Oh, no. No, bro. My fat ass slowing myself down. Right, yeah. I, that's why I always just buy comfort now. I'm a comfort man. Did your dad take you to the movies when you were a kid? You know what was cool with my dad, bro, growing up, watching movies and why I like films so much is because my dad was that guy that would see all the blockbusters first, and then once he ran out of the blockbusters, he would start picking the movies at the bottom of the, like, like the, the movies that you would, like the B movies, the two bidders. And so I got to see a lot of shitty movies and was able to appreciate them for what they were instead of going like, oh, it's a crappy movie. Let's turn it off. Like, I love, I'll watch, if you give me a good shitty movie, I'll watch it with the same intensity of a really good movie because of my dad doing that. My dad didn't speak English. He barely understood English. And he wouldn't know a shitty English movie if it hit him in the head, bro. Right. So he just liked everything. He just like everything. Yeah. Like I remember watching a movie called Papillon, bro, with Cle- That's with, a good with movie. Steve Austin, with Steve Austin, with fucking um, Steve McQueen and yeah. and um, Dustin Hoffman. Right. That's a great movie. I'm still here. Did you see The Great Escape when you were a kid? Did you watch yeah. it with your dad? Did you watch? Was your dad into John Wayne? Nah. My dad was really into to like John Wayne war movies, cowboy movies, uh, a lot of Clint Eastwood movies growing up. Uh, I mean, anything that was military, we watched the fuck out of it. Um, Star, Star, he liked any science fiction. My dad got me into science fiction as well. My dad was always obsessed with uh, the stars and stuff like that. Yeah, my dad never got into Star Wars. No. But he got into um, Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry is a fucking great, another great movie. What about Bullet? Did he like Bullet? I've never seen Bullet. Bullet's a great, that's one of the best chase scenes in a movie. The longest chase scene is the fucking that one or the one in um, Ronin. No, um, the French Connection. Oh, the French Connection is a good one. But the best chase scenes ever in the history of film, in my mind, are Ronin. Have you ever seen Ronin? No. It's with um, Robert De Niro, right? Robert De Niro, and he plays like a former spy. Um, and there's f- dude, the best chase scenes ever in any movie. I, I guarantee you, if you don't think so, you'll be at least what is the top ten. Bro, you ever seen a, a funny man like you ever like the, my dad like he never like he, he my dad was not like a Brando fan you know like Marlon Brando okay maybe it was before his time I don't yeah, know yeah I'm not a big Brando fan Cause either. that fool like I, Marlon Brando did a movie called Zapata right Viva Zapata yes, we played a Mexican Zapata right. I never seen it That's w- and we're gonna talk about that on the next I've one I've never seen it it's it, it it's one of those things where you're like what the Fuck, dude. Because it was also... How about John Wayne playing that Chinese guy? (laughs) Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's the thing. That's crazy. He played, what's his name, right? uh, Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan, yeah. With blue eyes. Right. (laughs) Bro, they did not give a fuck back then. You know what I mean? And that's the thing is there's no, like... mm, Push for authenticism. Or I felt like, like when I saw like Tom Cruise and Shogun, I'm like, come on, motherfucker. Oh, in um, give, uh, get, the Last get, Samurai? Give you know? Jet Li a break. In The Last Samurai? Yeah, that was kind of a dumb movie in that way. But it was a good movie because it was a good story. The War. Uh, 
Have you ever seen uh, 47 Ronin with uh, Keanu Reeves? Never. It's a little more appropriate because he's half Japanese and he's half white and he plays a half Japanese, half white. I thought he was half Hawaiian. Samurai? He might be. Keanu. Keanu. Oh, wow. Well. Japanese people in Hawaii. So, But yeah, it's a good, that one's a really good movie in, in that way where you're like, oh, like it's an American white dude. Yes, but he is half Japanese and the movie makes sense because it's around that he's that. Where the last samurai is like, this shit is just to make fucking Tom Cruise feel better. And it's just to stroke his own ego. So, you know, I mean, but I like, again, I, I'll, you put a fucking movie in front of me, I'll fucking sit and watch it. Except for musicals. Because fuck musicals. That's why. What kind of forever? What do you mean? Oh, Wakanda. I'll just say what kind of forever. Oh, no, I've never seen that. You've never seen it? I haven't seen it. You haven't seen the new one, what kind of forever? I don't watch it. No, know, the other you one? You know fucking why I don't want to see that movie. Bro. It's crazy. Have you seen it? No, but I, I, me and Lisa saw what kind of forever, and we, we walked out of it, bro. Like, this she, is the latest she, one. Right? She started falling asleep, and we started falling asleep too. Oh, she was falling. So you didn't walk out because you were offended by it. No, nah, I wasn't offended. I, I walked, am offended by it. I, I walked away. It's funny, man. But um, when I watch, I you know Doctor Umar. He's a, like a, a black dude, revolutionary guy. He talks about like the he always he always looks into everything that's going on and everything like he goes like for example he goes like this it's it's funny the way america is dealing with the fentanyl epidemic is different from no, the, when, they, when they at the crack epidemic why because why people are dying you know brother fucking with fentanyl but during the crack epidemic it was okay. You know, that's him. Right, right, right. So this food, this, this whole thing about Wakanda forever, how the Mexicans gentrified Wakanda. That, see, that's, okay. <laughs> I'm, mad, I'm mad for a different reason because it's like, it, I feel like Disney was like, well, we need to have blacks and whites have peace in this movie. So they're going to be cool with the CIA, which is what everybody's enemy is in this country. And then they go, well, who do we get to fight them? <coughs> Damascus. Well, you know, can't do Asian people, I guess. Let's do Mexicans. Yeah, you know what? Let's take the stereotypical fucking everlasting battle between fucking blacks and Mexicans and let's put it on a big screen and make superheroes out of it. It's like, fuck you, Disney. Fuck you. Why don't you fucking, dude, do something like, why don't you do black on black violence or fucking get some, some white people in there or something? Why has it got to be us, dude? Why couldn't we have gotten together? And fought the CIA together. Apparently, you've never been to Wakanda, right? First of all, bro, Wakanda. Wakanda is hard to find if you're not Wakandian, all right? right. Hard to find. Okay. And they have this, this I don't know, the, what's the name of their power source? They have vibranium, okay. which is power thing that they use, which is bigger than, better than water, better than everything. Mm -hmm. Where they get all their power, all their strength, all their technology, right? Unbreakable, CIA. Everybody been trying to steal it and use it to fight wars, but they keep it away from everybody. And it's hard to get in there. Nobody's ever been to Wakanda unless you've been invited. Right. But not no more. Eh? That's the Mexican dude, right? The, the motherfucker sneaks in illegally inside Wakanda. Yes, across the river. And go under the river. Avoids TSA. Avoids border patrol. Dude, how fucking offensive Wakanda. Is Border Patrol couldn't even, they didn't know how they got in. Bro. He just what? comes out of the water, bro, and starts fucking flapping his little leg wings all cocky. Right. And he's fucking pretty much threatening Wakanda. And he goes, listen, man, stop dealing with these, these white people. Or else we're going to fuck your ass up. Right. And they ended up fucking them up, bro. They drowned the Wakandans. Did they really? See, I don't want to fight black people, bro. Oh. Yeah. I haven't up. seen the rest of the movie, but that's what Doctor Umar said. Right. I, w I don't. Well, that's the thing is, I don't want to watch the movie. I don't want but to give credit. This guy broke it down like this: when they, when Superman came out, 1940, 1950, whatever year it came out, he was fighting the Nazis in the in the comic book. Right. When Captain America came out, fighting the Nazis. Right. All right. And then when. Um, when fucking um, 
the Marvel Avenger when uh, Mar when um, the X Men came out, supposed to be like you know they're fighting for the rights of the mutants, which they took away from Marshall the Martin Luther King, right? And what's his name, right? But then you have Wakanda now, the Black Panther, right? All right, they're the smartest people in the world. They got vibranium. They could end. They could end all black diseases all over the world. I like this guy. Their enemies are the Portuguese, are the French, or anybody who ever enslaved a black person. Why are they going there and fucking them up? Right. Why are they friends with them? Right. But nah, Hollywood told them, nah, your enemy is Mexicans. Mexicans, bro. <laughs> And it's fucked up, dude, because we're trying to end that. Like, that's the thing is there's, like, a whole push to be, well, like. Well, Mexicans ain't mad because ah. they happen to be in films. That's the conundrum that we're in. That's the so that's what the guy said. He go, like, and I'm listening to it going, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the, 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 the Wakandans, they're, 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 they're fucking fighting each other, bro, in part one. Black on black violence. And then the second one is black on Mexican violence or Mexican on black violence. In 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 Wakanda, in the first Wakanda, bro, black be, um black dude, Black Panther, that dude that plays um Apollo Creed and Apollo, that actor oh, um, from Fruitville Station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy's a great actor. What's that his name? dude plays? What's yeah, his name in the movie? Killmonger. He plays Killmonger, bro. Right. His first scene, he goes into a museum. And starts taking all the African artifacts, and then he goes. And the, the white lady stops him. His arm. He told her, "Get your hands away from me." Hey, what are you doing, stealing these? Oh, the way you guys stole it from my people, right? Two hundred years right. ago. And he names the tribe where it belonged from. Right. That you know who you took it from. And he knew the name of where it be come from. And that fool grabbed it, bro, and realized how much power it has that they didn't have. And he starts fucking everybody up with that. And then that motherfucker breaks into Wakanda and tells them, motherfucker, we got to go fuck these motherfuckers up. But nah, he becomes the enemy. He becomes that, oh, you're too loud, brother. Right, dude. We need to get along with these oh. white. We need to get along with these How white. How are we not outraged by this shit? Anyways, How so, are we not fucking outraged by this So this, this, is, this, is, this is the guy speaking, by the way. Okay. Not, not, these are not my words, but just to tell you what I... Sure, what sure, this sure. guy, his brother broke it down. <laughs> I want to see this guy now. This is good. But it's crazy, like, yeah. but everybody else on the comments, it's only a movie, my brother. No, no, because this is what we're going to talk about. Because rep no, because you, your representation, it's okay to go out and kill well, each other. This is what we're going to talk about on the next on the next podcast, okay? this is, And this is a great way to Latino cinema, by the way. Because one of the things that I want to point out is not just all these Latin people in film because that's what everybody else has been doing. Oh, look at, oh, he was in this movie and he was in that movie. What I want to also address is how we saw it. How we, we saw how it, it affected us and our lives and how we were because in the 80s to me, we were fucking drug dealers and we were fucking pimps and we were fucking getting shot by Hunter and fucking Miami Vice. And so like like I, I, like getting beat up by Steven Seagal, yeah, Chuck dude. Norris. So it's like, so I, I really want to talk about all that stuff on the next one. I'm so cool, man. fucking mad from this fucking movie. Man. What's nope? Cut that off. <laughs> hey man, um, thank you very much, man. You have fun. Thank you yes. for thank you for coming back. History we're back. We got a couple of more episodes coming up, and then we're gonna dig into some other stuff. And um, I want to thank Butch Escobar from the Bay showing up here, man. Um, My pleasure. You're still doing um, your – you have a gig coming up? Yeah. So February 4th, I'm going to be at um, – uh, I'm going to be in Fresno. Um, can I look it up? Yeah, look it up. Here we go. Um, I'll be at Fresno uh, first uh, – Saturday, February 4th, I'll be at the um, – I'll be at uh, – uh, the Full Circle Brewing Company in Fresno uh, with um, uh, Central Valley Comedy um, and uh, the with me and uh, my homie Saul Trujillo are going to be uh, headlining that. What's happening, everybody? 
check me out. Um, I don't know when this comes out, but um, there's a movie out right now on Netflix called You People, directed by Kenya Barris, written by Kenya Barris and Jonah Hill, starring um, Eddie Murphy and Jonah Hill and um, Lauren London. So go check that out. Oh, yeah, I made it. I have a little cameo. Try to find me. It's quick. Did you get to meet uh, Eddie Murphy? Yeah, they met Eddie Murphy. How how was that for you? He told me I was a funny motherfucker. Did he really? That's yeah. fucking amazing, yeah. bro. It was badass. That's fucking rad. Thank you, everybody. History for fun.